And yes, we are live on YouTube and we'll see if everyone can see everything. Hello, C. Diddy Lice, Diddy Ice on ET Bug. So, guys, I'm, I'm actually curious. Why are you still on Periscope and not watching me on YouTube? So, I don't do a lot of Periscope, so <clears throat> most of my stuff is on YouTube. And I, I only do like uh, one live stream a week on on Periscope. And I am I have several videos a week on YouTube. So hang out on YouTube, not, not on Periscope. So right now, this is live on both Periscope and YouTube. And my channel is Rob Braxman Tech. So you can, uh, you can just follow me on the YouTube channel. Hello, Joe. Joe, of course, will not leave. Bytes VPN. I don't trust Google. I don't understand what's the connection. Bytes VPN is not Google. I heard that Ring is spying on you. It is spying on you, but you still like your uh, burner phone. So, hello, people on uh, YouTube here. There's uh, Iron Fist, uh, uh, Spots, and Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones was the first one. Entire Meyer and AMG. Hello, hello, Joe. So, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for watching on both platforms and glad to see you all on these uh, two platforms and you're all welcome on both. Uh, but if you will actually miss out if you don't watch me on my YouTube channel since I'm hardly ever on Periscope. So Periscope is not my main platform now. My main platform has been moved to YouTube. So go watch on YouTube. Uh, I meant about YouTube. I don't trust Google. It's very simple. You mean you trust Periscope? What's the difference? It's actually a good topic tonight. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. So you can actually understand what the difference is. And maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it matters. Maybe it doesn't. It's up to you. You're going to find out. So anyway, is, is everything okay here? Lighting, sound. Just to do a test here. Uh, the sound seems seemed hot to me. But uh, if is it too hot or sound is clear? Just do a... I just want to do a verification test here on both platforms. The signal is kind of wavering. Uh, you can watch me. Uh, there were, uh, uh, it's a true what I heard. If I give you a phone, that is true. Do you use Prism? Do I use Prism? You mean the uh, three-letter agency Prism? I don't have to use it. They use it on you. I have nothing to do with it. Okay, so welcome Periscope. Uh, I'm actually surprised that people are uh, still remembering me on Periscope, even though I haven't broadcasted on Periscope too often here. So uh, let's see uh, about the people on, on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. So um, we have a very interesting topic tonight. Working well, yes. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Faraz, Hero, uh, Entire Meyer. Or is it Faraz? Whatever, however. I don't know how you. Uh, uh, Sound is clear. Uh, thank you, Double J. So, okay, so, Tony. So, smaller budget, smaller staff on Periscope, less chance of being spied on. Mm, no, not true. Prism is a streaming app that allows you to stream to multiple platforms. <laughs> no, Life of Crawford. You know what I use for multicasting? It's called Braxme, and I wrote it. Yes, hello, Tony. I already said that. I wrote it. I don't rely on any, anyone else. If somebody says, well, you could use live streaming, you can use these platforms and this and that, and I say, Zach you. I'm going to use my own. So I, you know, I am capable of doing that. Some people have wondered, do I actually know how to program? Do I actually, does Rob Braxman actually know how to program? So if you want to see if I know what I'm talking about, why don't you go over to GitHub? I open sourced Braxme and I open sourced another program I'm writing for Linux. And it's on it's on GitHub. And you can see if I actually know what I'm talking about. One is a cybersecurity thing, and you can see if I know anything about cybersecurity by looking at that, if you can understand what it does. And of course you have Brax.me. So and look at the encryption. Somebody did, and somebody talked to me today and said, uh, yeah, it's uh a little bit complex, I understand, because there's a lot of stuff in there. <clears throat> and if you think I don't know what I'm talking about, 
go check the code okay go check the code and you can see if uh, this guy is just uh, hello night eyes if I'm just speaking uh, spe giving you nonsense here and convincing you that I know what I'm talking about but I really don't uh, I think I can prove to you that I know what I'm talking about I know how to hack I know I know how to do things and it's not a mystery how I know it it's uh, it's clearly stated there by looking at things that I made and you can look at it yourself I even have videos to talk about things like browser threats and beacon tests and all that and I wrote the code myself so if you have any doubt of what I can do then you can go look there so anyway that's just for people who, who are doubters so uh, a little audio a little overdriven I can see that it is I will uh, reduce it a little bit to normal there there you go I just uh, cut it down thank you thank you twist mint so people often complain that the video that the audio is uh, too low so I'm glad to see that it's actually matching what I see in the bars to what you're hearing so I don't want to be overdriven okay yes I did have uh, it, Brack's still free to non-business users yes and it's open source it's free for everyone now because it's now open source so I'm I'm no longer uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah Brax is completely open source now so if you don't want to use a Brax service for me you can actually set up your own Brax me call something else though because <clears throat> you have the source code so you can do it. It's it's available to you. Can you update my white towel or whatever? Uh, did I did I did a git clone your program looks good. I don't know Python really. I'm learning GTK and C. Uh, good. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So you you cloned. Uh, I didn't see anybody. You didn't actually uh, you cloned it, but you didn't uh, you didn't fork it. Okay. So it doesn't. If you clone it, I don't see it. I only see if it's a fork. Okay, so yes. So anyway, yes, I know a lot of people uh, went in there and and uh, tried to fork it or clone it and look at the code and see what it does. And it's kind of complex. I have to admit, it's not it's not it's not a beginner level kind of code. Your residence, your residence. Uh, um, did you change names? How are you doing, your residence? Okay, uh, uh, okay. So before I start, before I start, so if you're on YouTube and if you're not on YouTube, I recommend that you do go on YouTube right now. Um, before I start, let me just ask uh, the people who are watching: if you like what you are going to see, then please hit that like button, because the way it is on YouTube, the algorithm decides the importance of a video based on some signals and one of the signals is if you like it if you don't like it then uh, hit dislike but hit something <clears throat> like or dislike I don't really it, it doesn't matter to me just uh, react to it in some way and I don't mind if you don't like me it's it's okay but if you don't like me I'd rather you speak up and you know we'll, we'll Signal is a little unsteady here. If you don't like me, then it's okay if you speak out and tell me that. I, I don't get offended by that. It's uh, it's okay. So uh, thank you, people. And I'm actually uh, I'm actually surprised at the loyalty of the people on Periscope. And I, I really appreciate that you still watch me when I've disappeared from Periscope for for a long time, and you're still you still come back and watch and I, I really appreciate it it's uh, uh i'll continue to broadcast on periscope because uh that is appreciated that shows that uh i still have a base on periscope you're okay oh, thank you life of crawford okay so i i appreciate that i'll do it for you and i'll make sure to keep broadcasting keep broadcasting on periscope however i need to grow my youtube channel so go into uh it's me and my we all like you so who are you with your new name your resonance uh we all uh your resonance well i don't know who you are you are now you know i don't know who your resonance is give me some sort of clue and maybe a word and i'll figure it out 
Uh, I'm not dense. I can figure it out. So give me a clue, one word, and then I'll say, oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'll keep it a secret if you want. Okay. Oh, Seer Derek. Okay. No, no, I know. It's hybrid. Sh yeah, yeah. I follow on YouTube. Too. Thank you. Thank you, Seer Derek. Okay. Great goal. Thank you. Thank you. So I. If this is fun. We got a lot of people. Uh, we got a lot of people on, on YouTube and a lot of people in Periscope. This is way fun. Sweden. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that's why the Swedish flag is there. I was wondering if that was a, sorry, I thought, you know, Danish flag or Swedish flag. I wasn't sure. I was like thinking, wasn't this Danish flag like, if I recall, it was red. Was I right? Is it red? Can't remember. Can't remember. But I thought it was red. Okay. So then I like was wondering, like, what is that? Uh, yes, so Brax is not only free, Brax is open source. So if you're like saying, I don't know if I can trust Brax me, uh, it's open ducking source, okay? So stop with this, I don't trust this guy. It's open ducking source. If you want to know what it does, go look at the ducking source code. So he's spying on me. Well, look at the ducking source code and tell me where I'm spying on you. You know, it's it's open. Go look at it. I I did it. I don't make money doing it. Hello, Daryl from Kentucky. Hello, Silver Light. What do you think about the new California privacy law? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. So, uh, uh, th so anyway, thank you, Ken, for reminding me of that. So, people on YouTube, if you're uh, if you're uh, a supporter, please uh, hit that like button. And I would really appreciate it. We need to get the algorithm to to uh, recognize the channel. And the only way to do that is to for you to watch and for you to send a signal through the like button and send lots of comments. Your Danish is red and white and Swedish is yellow and blue. Thank you, your residents. I'm glad that I remember that. Will you play a jazz waltz? I have a gig tomorrow. I will not. Well, should I broadcast it? I don't know if I can. It depends on the signal, but I'm, uh, yeah, I have a gig tomorrow, <clears throat> kind of high end. I don't know if I can even, <laughs> I was I was hired to do a gig, I was hired to do a gig, and the guy is like uh, kind of a serious player, and I said, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm good enough to do what you want. So he wants to play all this John Coltrane stuff, and it's like, yeah, I don't know if I'm that skilled, so... I'm I'm passable, but I don't know if I can, you know, call myself pro. I'm not a pro. So anyway, I'm sem semi pro, semi pro. It's red. Sweden is blue and yellow. It's red, blue. So I was right, Cad Cad Noir. I was right. So we have many people on Braxme from Denmark, and cert certainly several from Sweden as well. Since you said signal is signal safe, uh, signal somewhat safe, but there are, you know, issues with signal and matrix and talks and some of these new ones I've heard. And you got to understand, uh, hello, I lighten up. <clears throat> um, you should definitely broadcast your gig. Why should I broadcast my gig? Certainly not on YouTube. YouTube is going to cite me for copyright violation if we play any tune. Let's say, uh, what is it? Composition copyright violation. So if we play any tune that's based on any kind of jazz standard, they're going to say that. What's better? Uh, baby Steps instead of Giant Steps. So that's one of the tunes that this guy wants to play, Giant Steps. I don't have a problem with Giant Steps, but I have a problem playing it at 280. Can you explain about the open source? Is that to the whole Brax platform? Yes. Open source means you can see the source code. There's nothing secret about it if you... Uh, Want to see how Braxme works? I opened up the entire source code uh, to parts that are not that uh, there. There are parts that I did not open the source code to, but they have nothing to do with security. They have to do with the enterprise, like social vision side. So they have nothing to do with the main use of Braxme. So <clears throat> the most uses of Braxme is open source. There's just some, you know, narrow areas like making websites and such, which has nothing to do with security. Well, most of Gershwin's work is now public domain. Really? Sweden 
Denmark, Sweden, Swedish people don't like, I mean, Den, Danish people don't like Swedish people and vice versa. Why isn't the media talking about what the government is doing to stop 2020 from getting hacked? I don't understand what that means. Okay, so let me just tell you a story, guys, while we're at it here. And thank you for being here. And thank you uh, for also being on YouTube. And uh, so we got a bunch of people on YouTube and a bunch of people on uh, on Periscope. Um, yes, uh, your residence, it's available. So, you know, nobody can come to me and say that I'm trying to cheat you or play games with you. You know, it's open. I, I can't make money from it now. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's to show you that what I say is true. I'm a public interest technologist. And what I do is for the public interest. And because of that, I don't make much money doing what I do. And uh, if you think we make a lot of money from YouTube, no, we don't. So uh, support what I do. I, I have a patron account. And a uh, little, little bit, every little bit helps. So, you know, we, we need... Uh, we need the support. The support is always uh, uh, important, and I can I uh, you can support in multiple ways to benefit yourself. You can use some of my products, like a Brax router, and the Brax router is a pretty interesting thing. And then the other way you can support is from Patreon and Bytes VPN. So there's several ways to to support the channel, and we would appreciate it. And it's uh, it you know it's uh, healthy. Uh, to support something that you know is benefiting you in the end because this is for your benefit that we do this uh, search for Rob Braxman you also open up the code to the VPN there's no code to the VPN the VPN uses all open source it's open when you buy the VPN uh, all the code is visible it it's it's all you know it's not open source it's just open if you want to check out, you know, how I coded the Brax router, uh, I don't hide the code from you. You can go look at it and read it. Uh, however, I don't want you to copy it because I need to make money from it. So I don't want you to copy it. So it's there and you should play, play, pay the license to support this channel. Uh, but it's open. It's not, you can, you know, if you want to, if you illegally copy what I do, you could. Uh, not very nice of you if you do that. But you could do that, and I won't appreciate it, but you could do that. And you're making this channel fail because that's the only thing we're going to live on is all the things that I spend months doing. And, uh, you know, so being open source means I don't really uh, I don't really benefit from that. If you're still on PIA, you really need to move out of that. PIA also has been bought out by a different company that has been known to, to promote malware. I also followed you on YouTube, but I'd like to follow you here. Okay, thank you, residents. I need to check out your VPN. Yes, please check out my VPN, Bytes VPN. It's a better VPN for many reasons because I made the VPN because I was so angry at PIA. So I was doing a PIA promotion here. I liked PIA before, and they've just gotten gone from bad to worse. And uh, suck that, suck that NordVPN. That's another piece of crap. VPN. No, the reason I made my own VPN is because of products like NordVPN and PIA are crap. Okay, so I normally use Ethernet, but just plug into the wireless to use Catch MITM at the same time and then disconnect the wireless. It works over the wired connection. Uh, yeah, different topic to Catch MITM. Okay, uh, hello, Silver. Do you still sell? They sell mobile routers. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I sell these routers, and the change in the router, and we'll get to the, I don't want to keep talking about my products here. I want to talk about what we're going to talk about after this. So don't leave, because the main topic we're going to talk about is extremely important. It's one of my most important videos that no one is watching, and the video is about OPSEC. Okay, OPSEC video, and nobody's watching that video right now. I understand, because it sounds boring, but it's the most important thing you're going to listen to. Anyway, before I get into that, we're going to talk about this thing. This is a Brax Wi-Fi router. I changed this. So this is still a Brax Wi-Fi router, but I changed this to now be a Brax router wired. You can now run this as a wired router. 
You can now run this as a wired router and you can, you don't understand the benefits of that. Watch my video on how I set up my home network because now you can set up a VPN as part of your house. You, you don't have to log in. You can just set one network out to be VPN and one network to not be VPN. And it's only possible with these inexpensive things that I built. If you build one on your own, it's going to be very expensive. And I built one that is cheap. This is something that you just plug in and you're done. And you're running a home network with a VPN that normally you'd have to do in an enterprise and it would cost you a lot of money. It would cost you thousands of dollars to set this up. And we're talking about a, a hundred and some bucks for a Brax router. Okay? So just, uh, just so you understand. Anyway, the new video. The new video. You haven't watched yet, Tony G. So uh, the new video is about... OPSEC. It's a hundred. Uh, it's hundred fifty nine plus shipping. So it's around yeah, hundred fifty nine plus shipping for the Brax router, wired or wireless. You have a choice now. That's why this is very special. Wired or what? Yes, you should cancel your PIA. Yes, why Norris? Yes, I promoted PIA. Now I don't want you to be on PIA. They're gonna screw you. Go to Bytes VPN. OPSEC may be the most important part of privacy. Watch the video. Yes, guys, I'm going to tell you something. I made a video. Hello, Lenny PR. I made a video, and it's about OPSEC, operation security, operational security. And it's one of the most important videos I've ever made. And uh, Twist Mint made a comment about it, and he said, well, this is like a summary of everything I've been talking about on Periscope for four years. Uh, uh, Byte CPN is $89 a year. Uh, I haven't been on Brax for a very long time, but I'll come back and sure about my login. Set up a new account, your residence. You set up a new account. Then later on, you can set up a, a Google Authenticator or Authy account. Am I safe until 2020, 1020? Uh, am I safe? What happens in 1020? Is there something that happens at 1020? Anyway, uh, uh, going back to what I'm talking about. OPSEC, OPSEC. That's what we're talking about today is OPSEC. And what is OPSEC? Uh, some guy, some some idiot left some comments on uh, on my... I deleted it because he was kind of a an a-hole. But there was this guy who made a comment like, ha ha, what the, OPSEC is a military term, and it's like it shows this, hello, Tom Spark. Tom Spark reviews, reviews VPNs. And you're going to ask him about NordVPN. I actually linked his video on my channel on YouTube to show you, to show you, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, what Tom Spark says about NordVPN. If you love NordVPN, go watch Tom Spark video. If you love PIA, go watch Tom Spark videos. So Tom Spark is uh, is there. You should follow him on YouTube. He is just spot on. I I didn't ask Tom to review my VPN, so he hasn't reviewed it. But uh, he's very fair, and uh, you know he he does it. Uh, Honestly, and so he uh, he'll give you an honest view of some of the VPNs I talk about negatively. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, going back to what I'm talking about, we are going to talk about OPSEC. Uh, OPSEC is, in fact, from uh, military use. It actually started uh, uh, in uh, OPSEC is a term that you know applied to World War II. And what it is, is, uh, let me tell you a term that uh, applies to OPSEC, and it's uh, loose, loose lips, loose lips sink ships. Loose lips sink ships. So if you were back in World War II and you talked about, you know, uh, oh, my, uh, my, uh, my son is in, uh, in England, and... Uh, He's there for, uh, you know, they're going to attack, uh, they're going to attack Normandy. Of course, nobody knew they were going to attack Normandy. So if, if somebody spoke about that, that would be bad OPSEC. So OPSEC is being aware 
it's a situ- situational awareness thing about you know what you say, what you do, and about things that affect your overall security or your nation's security or your personal security. So in this channel, we're going to talk about OPSEC as it, term, as it uh, relates to your personal, personal security, how it relates to you personally. And I'm going to talk about it. Uh, and uh, uh, come on, Chronicles of Age, you don't mention any other VPN here. The only VPN you need to think about is right there, right there. Don't talk about any more VPNs. This is not a place to, to talk about other VPNs. Okay, so anyway, the vi- the topic of this channel is saying, well, of this uh, broadcast today is saying, uh, let's talk about operational security or OPSEC as it relates to you, the average person. Maybe some of you are not average, but let's say you're average. And we're going to talk about operational security as it relates to your security and compared to somebody like John McAfee. Okay, what is the audio feature, Tony? I don't know what that is. Okay, so does anybody know who John McAfee is? If you don't know who he is, just, uh, you know, just say, type a one if you don't know who he is. Okay, so, I mean, uh, he's kind of, you know, he's all over the place, so. Does anyone not know who John McAfee is so that I can I can say I can kind of give you a quick quick breakdown? So anyway, so it doesn't look like too many people here don't know who John McAfee is. So John McAfee um, is on the run. Okay. So John McAfee is on the run. So your resident doesn't know who John uh, just Google him. Uh, yeah, Google, if you don't know who John McAfee is, you're you haven't been you're in Sweden, and even in Sweden, you know, you should know who John McAfee is. So, John McAfee, of course, uh, I you don't know. Yes, so John McAfee, of course, uh, you know, created, uh, his company created McAfee Antivirus. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, John McAfee, of course, uh, is... Uh, is the, cre- the virus creator, anti-virus creator. So Mac- John McAfee is an, is uh, is uh, on the run. Yes, he's on the run from the U.S. government, and uh, and he's the creator of McAfee antivirus. He does run for. He is currently running for president on the Libertarian ticket in the United States. He ran in the past uh, election also as the Libertarian candidate for president. Uh, off the United States, and he came in third. Okay, so th- that's the Jan- John McAfee I'm talking about. He he's also uh, uh, affiliated with uh, with uh, many cybersecurity kind of products like Zone Labs and so on, and um, and he's been on the run, and uh, he's also well known for crypto. So John McAfee uh, um, was promoting crypto, and he. Uh, he uh, and he, uh, you know, they're gonna make a movie out. Of, uh, uh, I think there are a couple of movies coming out uh, about him shortly in the summer, and uh, so you'll see that. Uh, what is that? Mel Gibson, John like to have mail. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So sorry, <clears throat> YouTube uh, filtered your statement there. I had to approve it. Okay, so anyway, uh, F that dude. Okay, so uh, the reason I'm talking about John McAfee is he's on the run. And the ones that want to kill him, of course, are three-letter agencies of this country, the United States. So they've... uh, Apparently they've attempted to murder him a few times, so they wanna they wanna suicide him. They wanna suicide him like Epstein. Okay, you wanna be suicided, guys? Anybody? Anyone wanna be suicided? So uh, if you wanna be suicided, then yeah, get on the bad side of the uh, three-letter agency. So yes, yeah, so they they wanna suicide him. So uh, 
Uh, YouTube censored that. Yes, YouTube censored that. I don't know why. It, the al algorithm is kind of weird. So anyway, so he, uh, so uh, uh, in any case, um, obviously being on the run from three-letter agencies that are trying to suicide you, to, to put it mildly, like they suicided Epstein. I wonder who suicided Epstein. Did he suicide himself? Or got, did he get suicided by other people? Okay. What has he done since they want him? He, uh, you know, he has secrets. So he has secrets that uh, people in three-letter agencies don't like. And also he's running from the IRS because he decided he wasn't going to pay any more taxes since 2011 or something. So anyway... <clears throat> Uh, he has different OPSEC needs than the average person. Now, why am I even bringing up John McAfee as kind of a, I could have used any other person. I could have used Bill Clinton versus you. I could have used, uh, you know, Trump versus you or whoever. Different people with different, uh, different uh, uh, objectives when it comes to cybersecurity versus the average person. The reason I bring up John McAfee as an example Yes, they've tried to kill him, uh, yes, many times, yes. The reason, uh, uh, the reason I use John McAfee as an example is that my YouTube channel, if you're not following me on YouTube, then just be aware of this. Uh, I will be interviewing John, and I will make a video, and I will release the video uh, probably not next week, but the following week. So I will be interviewing John McAfee on this YouTube channel and it will be uh, here in uh, so possibly not next week but the following week okay so John McAfee will be interviewed here and you can ask him some very specific questions about three letter agencies and what they're they're up to and what why he's uh, what he has to do and some comments that he made are very very interesting and and we want to talk about it even tonight so anyway, uh, so anyway, is if that's uh, if that's interesting for you, then uh, just make sure that you uh, you know that that yes, John McAfee will be. I will be interviewing John McAfee uh, in here in uh, on my not on Periscope, but on uh, YouTube on my YouTube channel, and, and I will be posting the video. Uh, Probably not this week. That's not this coming week, but the following week. Okay. So yes, I hope that'll be interesting because I, you know, I obviously uh, have interesting things to talk about, and uh, I can ask him more interesting things. And and um, and John, don't don't let him fool you. You know, when you you look at John McAfee, he he comes up a come, comes across as kind of like a jokester and and. Uh, and you know like a druggy druggy crazy guy because that's the image he wants to portray and don't be stupid in thinking that he's stupid he's not stupid this guy is incredibly intelligent and uh we want to know his dealings with deep state and three-letter agencies i want to sucking know what's going on i want to know and he made some statements that i thought was very very interesting and uh and and again, it depends on where you are. And he made a statement today that was kind of interesting too. He said, uh, the safest email is Gmail, he said. And normally I wouldn't agree with that. Normally I wouldn't agree with that. And then I thought about his scenario and I said, hmm, I never thought about it this way. But for John, Gmail actually would be safer in his case, not in your case, but in his case, and and again, this is a matter of proper OPSEC, operational security. So OPSEC means you you look at your own threats, what you consider threats to you, and you model you model your your security plan related to the threats that you have to deal with. If you're not running from the government, you have a different set of, of expectations. And mostly the people who follow me are not running from the government, so we don't necessarily have to to deal with the kind of things that uh, Snowden or John McAfee or 
Assange. Well, Assange is in jail now, but these people have a little bit of a different threat because they're dealing with state players, and it's you know they they have to hide. Now, of all of these people, John McAfee is the one that is successfully hidden because we know that Snowden is in Russia in Moscow somewhere. We know that, that Snowden is in Moscow somewhere. We actually don't know where McAfee is. He, he's on the air. He's he's on Twitter every sucking day, and we don't actually know where he is. We on, only know what he says is where he is, and he says he's... He says that last uh, that yesterday or today, he was in the Balt near the Baltic Sea. So that's what he says today. And uh, a couple of days ago, he said he was at near the Black Sea. Where is he exactly? I have no sucking idea. And it just this is his own obsec, and part of it is disinformation. So now we're going to talk about why the heck is he successful with hiding a lot of this, including what his location is. And it's something that you all need to learn. It's about disinformation. And he is a sucking expert at disinformation. He actually makes you think. He posts, He's posting photos of, of, of himself in the Baltic Sea or in, uh, in uh, the Black Sea or, or in in some part of Russia, or some, hello hockey rules, or some part of Iceland, and so on, and uh, and then uh, uh, it's actually a question: Was he actually there? Well, he was on a boat, but it's actually a question: of Was he actually there? And uh, or was he there a month ago, two weeks ago? Uh, I'm off the belief that, yes, I can see you hockey rules, yes. Uh, I'm off the belief that whatever he posts is never up to date. So that's why the three-letter agencies can never get him. Um, Baltic Sea, Black Sea is bordered both by Russia only. Um, I thought the Black Sea had Ukraine on there. I thought the Black Sea uh, was partially Ukraine or... You know, I know there was that disputed uh, area there that uh, got taken over by Russia, but uh, I thought that included uh, included uh, um, Ukraine. So Snowden needs to jump into no AMG. No, he needs to hide some different way. No, he uh, he needs he doesn't need to go to Brax. No, can we download a guide to security? No, we get security is not a thing that is just one quick answer. It depends on the threat. It depends on the threat. Please, uh, with this deep fake sh- photography video, are no longer reliable sources of credible into... That's correct, Steve. You are absolutely... That's part of it. That's part of this information. And you can use that to your benefit. I'm a ghost in three scopes and seen in three. I see you hockey rules very well, although there's so many comments here on YouTube and Periscope, so I may not respond like immediately. Hello, say what? Uh, Iron Fist. Uh, yep, Ukraine and where the Crim- Crimean the Crim- Crimean War. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's in the Black Sea. Remove the metadata from the picture, and one can be at any place at any time. Yes, but Russia is touching both without an intermediate border. Correct. Security is OPSEC, how you act, your behavior, discipline, mindset. Correct. Terminal, term, uh, terminusist, terminusist. Okay, so, so, uh, uh, back to what we're talking about. So, uh, OPSEC, OPSEC is about disinformation. Now, who you want to disinform depends on who your threat is, but OPSEC is part of that. And OPSEC can be applied at many levels. Let's say that who's your threat? Who, who, who do you want to protect against? Um, in my case, uh, I, I don't want to be doxxed. Do you want to be doxxed? Anybody? Okay, if you want to be doxxed, type a one. If you don't want to be doxxed, type a two. Okay, one, if you want to be doxxed. Two, if you do not want to be doxxed. Three, if you don't know what doxing is. 
So type that. One, you want to be doxxed. Two, you do not want to be doxxed. Three, you don't know what doxing is. Just that's threat level number one. Okay. Why is there ghosting? Uh, I don't know. So two, 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 don't want to be doxxed. Okay. So anyone don't even know what doxing is. So I, I don't expect anyone to be typing a one here, but uh, okay. So anybody uh, 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 it would be crazy to put a one, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, Mixus AR doesn't know what doxing is. Best Kid doesn't know what doxing is. <laughs> and Mel Gibson. Uh, uh, okay. So. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, explain 1.99. Okay, so those of you who don't know what doxing is, doxing is when somebody, I'm an expert doctor, by the way, in case you didn't know. I am an absolute, I, I'm, I'm probably one of the top level doxers. I can dox anything. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly, you're tempting me to put a one. Okay, let me tell you about me. You know, I am an expert doxer, and uh, doxing is the ability to go to the internet and find out anything about anyone, like where you live, what you do, where, all that information about anyone I care to find uh, if they get on my nerves. And, uh, you know, I try not to do it. It's time consuming. It takes a long time. But if I did it, uh, chances are I will find you. Okay, I, I can find you. Uh, let me just say that very few people can say this, but I can find just about anyone. It's very hard to hide from me. This one guy uh, taunted me. He went to my broadcast and taunted me and said, you can never find me and whatever. And uh, then he came back to my broadcast and I said, oh, yeah, you are from your family is in Mexico because I see all your family in Mexico. Yeah, you try to hide yourself, but I fucking found you. And I know what your job is. You live in Fresno. This is what you do for a living and so on and so forth. And then, you know, I, I can name your family members. This one kid went to me and attacked me on a broadcast. And I said, do not do that or I will actually, I will dox you. Okay, well, this, this guy doxed me and I found out he was a 15-year-old kid also in, no, he was in, uh, uh, was he Fresno? No, uh no, um, where's, the, where's the state capital in uh, uh, Sacramento? It was in Sacramento, and then I found out where he lived and single mom, his mother's single mom, and what school he went to and all that. And the only reason I didn't, you know, I, I confronted him. I said, I know who you are exactly. And, uh, you know, and you want me to tell your principal all the nasty things you say on the Internet? And, uh, you know, I know who your mom is and who your parents are, who your relatives are and, you know, your divorced mom and your car and your house. I see all that. And uh, do you want me to broadcast that on the Internet? And I didn't because he was 15. So but he was attacking me. So when somebody attacks me, I fight back and I'm an expert at this. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I do have a set of skills. So anyway, it was funny because he actually contacted me on Twitter and asked me to dox somebody else. So it was funny. So the point is doxing is when somebody attacks you in that way. And in some cases, some people here who do broadcast it, who broadcast on YouTube or on Periscope uh, find themselves uh, at a loss because they did not plan their internet experience and how they're going to go do their media being a social media creator and they exposed themselves and they didn't really plan it out they think all they have to do is go on, on in the internet and do, go go uh, 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 you know do a broadcast and they're going to be famous and that's it and then they got doxxed and then things started to show up on you know on uh, Craigslist saying that they, you know, they're selling things in their house and, and uh, sexual, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that they want to do with them and all that's showing up on Craigslist because they know where they live and their phone number and all that. And it was the kind of harassment that can occur when somebody knows who you are. That's called doxing. That's called doxing, okay? And uh, I tell you how to fight that, and that's one of the threats. So my job is to protect you from that. 
Now, if somebody abuses me, I will fight back. But in general, my, my goal is to prevent such nastiness. And uh, uh, if you start doxing me, I'll dox you back. Okay, so don't try to dox me. Don't try to dox me because you will not like the consequences if I dox you back because I have a platform here and I can shame you. And that's happened to me a few times on, on Periscope where somebody actually attacked me like some trolls and they were persistent and I had to reveal who they are if you're at the right age. I don't do it to kids. <clears throat> okay, the point is that's a threat level for most people. That's kind of a basic thing you want to protect against. I'll give you a kind of a basic example. If you do not, if you are on Facebook and you put your name on there and this, this uh, young lady went to a bar Young lady went to a bar, and she must have been attractive. This is the story. I don't know who this is. This is a story in the press. And some guy was hitting, hit, you know, was trying to hit, hit on her at the bar, and she was very uh, irritated with this guy and kind of ignored her. And she went home. She went home, and this guy was referred as a friend on Facebook. Facebook referred this a-hole guy as her friend and now the a-hole guy knows her name and now he knows she knows his name and now he can now dox her and stalk her and do any kind of thing like that. Okay, that's the kind of thing that we are worried about and people say, well, we don't care about the internet. We don't, you know, you got to be fucking stupid to not understand that there's a risk to doing things in here. And if you don't protect yourself, you will regret it. You don't go around, you don't go around on the internet and talk about your life like, you know, like uh, you're talking to your friends. The internet is not for forgiving. You don't show secrets about your life on the internet because it will never get deleted. To me, it's stupid to go on the internet and talk about boyfriends and things and girlfriends and then put your photos on Facebook and then, you know, a month later, then you split up and then for the rest of your life, your kids, 20 years later, your kids are going to look and say, hey, mom, I saw you with this boyfriend. Of and then you were doing some crazy things with your boyfriend and he posted on Zucking Zuckbook. It's like, Zuck, are you that stupid? Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we're talking about when we say, what is the threat? You have to understand that you want to protect yourself at a basic level and you need to understand what the protection is. Now, what about the protection from Google and, and Apple and Facebook about your daily lives and tracking what you do? Facebook knows every sucking thing about you. Facebook is the sucking worst. Okay, Facebook knows everything you do. Facebook knows what you're zucky eating, what you're thinking, what who you're going to vote for before you even know who you're going to vote for. Facebook knows your, uh, uh, you know, who you, uh, uh, who you like on social media, who you don't like, what your opinions are, where you live, you know, what you're going to eat tonight. I mean, zuck. That's why you see all these ads and you're saying, why am I getting an ad on this website that relates to this drink because they probably spotted on Facebook. And this is kind of the stupidity of people that you don't even care that this kind of data is being collected about you because you say, well, I got nothing to hide, so who cares? They pop a few zucking ads. They pop a few zucking ads and you say, who cares? That's not going to kill me a few zucking ads. Are you zucking stupid? Okay. The stupidity comes when you don't understand when somebody pops a sucking ad, they know a lot about you, which means they know how to trigger you. My goodness, if I know how to trigger you, I can make you do things. I can cause a sucking riot. I can cause a sucking riot. Okay? I can make you go wild. You know, uh, here's an example. There's a population of people who are, are um, especially in politics, you know, like uh, the, uh, the anti-Trumpers, okay? Now, they have specific trigger points. If I know you're an anti-Trumper of the extreme point, and by the way, I can classify certain people 
that can fit into that category, you know, they probably have the numbers to say certain categories of people are more likely and they will know specifically who you in person will respond to something like that. And, and I can say, uh, I can drop a fake news thing, drop a fake news thing on the internet and then hit you with it. I, I, I got one today. Uh, I saw one on Twitter today. And, uh, and Brad Moore, who is on Periscope here, posted something on Twitter that the Ukrainian president uh, resigned. So then the anti-Trumpers are like, you know, <clears throat> quick to to jump on that right I don't care about politics so don't ask me about politics okay so the point is it's a trigger and where did he get that did he that was that fed to him even though it's fake news was that fed to him because they know he's an extreme anti-Trumper see when you're you belong to specific groups somebody knows that and can send trigger points with ads and all that and trigger you with uh, content. Do you know that a lot of the stuff in in social media is actually uh, amplified by bots? They're not even real. Some of these trending things, you, you can get rich on the internet and it's not even real. A lot of it is actually based, like trending, trending on Twitter. It's hard to do on Facebook, but on Twitter you can actually do amplification. So they have so many bots, bot accounts, so that you can actually amplify a message and make any message famous, uh, you know, it, let's say you uh, you want to make the word bottled water a bad word. Bottled water. Okay, hashtag bottled water. So all you have to do is amplify it and make thousands and millions of bots come into Twitter and say something about bottled water and it's actually not real people. Then it rises up on Twitter and you see it and you say, oh, look at that. Let me click on that. And you wait, put your own reactions and you think you're part of the group and you don't even realize that you're reacting to something that was triggered by another person. This is called disinformation against you. So we need to fight back and say, we need to have our own disinformation so they don't know what you're thinking. You want to fight back and say, the the uh, the uh, uh, social media and Google and Facebook and and Apple and Microsoft and all these companies don't know what's in your mind because then they can't influence you. Then you get a balanced view of the world and you don't you know you you get uh, both sides and you can decide on your own. And I don't really care what side you take as long as it's based on something that's real and balanced. And not if you have a targeted profile on Twitter and and even YouTube, uh, you will get a very targeted set of things that make you. It's it's like preaching to the choir. You will only get what you say you want, and then you will never get the other side. You'll never see a balance of opinion. Never. I don't want that. Um, Okay, I don't want that. I want I want to, my internet to be free, not controlled by Zuck. So Zuck is is an example where they can actually manipulate what you see, and especially older people who don't know this, they are they are given opinions, and then they see it on on their uh, YouTube. I mean, on their Facebook timeline, and they actually think that's real. Okay. It's, it's, so they actually start to say, oh, wow, uh, you know, whatever it is. Bottled water is the biggest, uh, biggest issue of the day. And uh, in, the, in the California, the biggest issue are straws. So hashtag straws. Hashtag straws. So in, in California, you know, the biggest uh, thing that's the, the baddest thing you can do is to use a straw. So you go to a sucking restaurant in LA and you don't get a straw. And if you ask for straw, the uh, the uh, the server looks at you like, "Wow, you don't care about the environment because you want a sucking straw." It's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> I don't sucking care. I'd need a straw. And it's like, you know, and and I use a straw and some of these people, you know, use plastic plates and everything. It's like, "What the fuck?" It's a fake thing because there's no actual environmental benefit to the straw itself. Why don't you just ban plastics altogether? I'll be supporting that. 
Uh, turtles. Straws are killing turtles. That's correct, Mad Cow. I'm sure you support that. <clears throat> okay, and, and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm in a zucking restaurant. I'm using a straw. You, restaurant, what do you do with a straw after I'm done eating? Do you throw it in a zucking ocean and kill the turtles? Is that what you do with straws? You, you pick straws specifically and you throw them in the zucking ocean just because you want to kill turtles like suck okay this is the kind of stuff that is uh, driven by media this is the kind of disinformation campaign that just bugs the hell out of me uh, be careful what you say here Steve okay be careful what you say here Steve because I want to want to get demonetized Okay, we understand. Just uh, just give some hints and don't say bad words. Okay, paper bags kill trees. What else is new? Look, Rob, stay on the subject. Anyway, the point of this is disinformation. People who control social media can control what is being said to you. They can say whatever is important. Bottled water is important. That and, and let me just uh, say it like this: You need to use bottled water because you, you don't want to drink municipal water. Let's say, and if that's pounded in your head every day, then you actually believe that. Okay, so then uh, if you're selling the bottled water, then of course it's very positive for you. Then let's say that an environmentalist says, "Don't do that because you're using plastic and you're doing uh, wasting plastic." And they can, if, if it's of benefit to someone with power, then they can say, uh, we don't care about that. We're going to go hide the opposing view and go push the view that we want using equipment that we're able to do, such as bots. You're not in the USA. It doesn't have to be in the USA. The story is not USA specific. So now when you understand what I'm saying, you're saying, hmm, you, they can actually do this. Unfortunately, they're already doing it, and most of you are still asleep at the wheel. And as John McAfee says, wake up, people! So, you know, uh, and you probably think that Epstein killed himself. Are you one of those? Epstein killed himself. Okay, I mean, come on. Common sense. Okay, did Epstein kill himself? <clears throat> yeah, we don't react because we say, wow, what can we do about it? You know, Epstein, uh, Epstein got suicided. Okay, by whom, why, how? You know, we don't care. Okay, that's just to, just to show you that, uh, you know, that they can control the media and say, well, we want to pacify you, so we're not going to let you think that uh, this is important. So we're going to pacify you, and then there will be a few people speaking out and they will be blocked on social media and things will happen and so on. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> bamboo straws here. Yes, I have had bamboo, bamboo straws. Metal straws are cool. I don't know about the, uh, you know, uh, keeping a metal straw clean. So, so even if they only influence a couple percent, it ends up worth a lot for, yes, exactly, Iron Fist, because Elections will swing with the influence of, you know, 10% uh, or less of the population. They don't have, uh, if I know, I don't need to waste resources. If I know that you're one of those trigger point guys that can easily be triggered, I can trigger you to cause a problem that will impact on the 10% in the middle. And what I can do to the 10% in the middle is make sure I know who the 10% in the middle are and find out what they're, what they're doing and make sure to, to uh, manipulate what they see on social media and the internet and so on. And those are the people, the 10% in the middle. Listen to this, people. The 10% in the middle, they've got nothing to hide. They got nothing to hide. So they exposed themselves and yes, yes, I'm uh, I'm Catholic and I live on the street and I believe in these and you know, this is my, you know, my uh, <clears throat> my job and this is my, my belief system and I'm this and I'm that and uh, you know, I, I'm 
pro pro this and against that and and uh this is my personality and they all know this and now that person that has nothing to hide has no sucking idea that their internet experience is being manipulated especially if you're old you don't know you just go to facebook and you don't understand what goes in your sucking timeline that you've been targeted and you're being targeted and your reaction is i don't care and yet it affects her vote Okay, and beyond that, I told you the doxing problem. Uh, and beyond that, you know, people attack you, people who don't like you. Uh, they, they want to affect you. Uh, things you put on the internet can affect your job choices. Things that you put on the internet can affect your insurance. And so on. So, so in general, that's the typical threat level that you have to protect against as a normal individual. Hello, Mama Goo. So, but if you are a John McAfee, you have a different different scenario because you're running from the government you don't know you don't want them to find out where you are and you need to be concerned about hiding in a more extreme way and those are two different levels when you go to the internet and say what you should should you do for security should you use store should you use some other secret method of using the internet uh, which there are and which one, which one is the, uh, which one should you use? And it depends on what your threats are. You have to decide for yourself what the threat factors are. In general, I'm going to say this it's kind of for the normal person. Okay, the normal person should protect their identity. Uh, it's not a straw. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about, you know, most of you are on the internet. You're on the internet here. Some of you are afraid to be on YouTube. Some of you are not afraid to be on YouTube. Some are afraid uh, uh, on YouTube so you go to Periscope. Some of you are, you are afraid to be on Periscope. Some of you don't want to comment because you think it's going to mark you in some way and have a negative negative impact. And I, I will, uh, I will uh, we will discuss all this. Uh, in the next, uh, we, we have uh, still a good hour here where we can talk about this. So, so uh, we're not going to run out of time here. We can talk about this deeply. So the point is that for the average person, you are, I will tell you what the average person's situation is. The average person already has an identity on the internet with your real name. In case you're wondering if that's true, all you have to do is go to the internet and search your real name. Is there anyone here who can uh, honestly say that they don't have any presence on the internet with their real name? I actually have a fairly minimal presence with my real name. Minimal. But, uh, uh, yeah, grandma may not have a presence on the internet with their real name in a big way. Maybe it's properties, things like that. Um, but they do now because they're in Zucking Zuck book. So just by putting grandma on Facebook, you are actually putting them on the internet with their real name and, and, and real name presence. So, so uh, uh, Sim, Sim here claims that he uh, has no results. And I'm fairly minimal because I've been on the internet since the beginning and I've always known what you can do with the internet. This is something that I've, uh, that I've always known. Yeah, it's pretty hard to dock somebody who's not on the internet. That's correct, Sim. It's very hard, yes, because you, you, uh, if you plan it out, it's hard. But that's not the average person. Ninety-nine percent of the people can be easily doxed. So, if you already have an internet presence, uh, uh, go ask your question, and I'll get back to it if I and remind me again if I miss it. Uh, don't worry about cookies. Okay, so, so if you're uh, uh, if you're uh, um, if you're on uh, uh, the internet, I mean, if your normal identity is on the internet, and it will be if you're a realtor, a doctor, a lawyer, or somebody you know that is has to deal with the community when you're out in public, then obviously you're going to be found on the internet, you know, doing official statements relating to whatever. And if you're a doctor, you're gonna, they're going to find records of credentials and things and maybe reviews of people that d deal with you and so on on the Internet. You can't stop that because once you're on there and you have an official capacity, you will be there. 
So let me just give you a a uh, a situation here. Yes, yeah, Zuckbook. Let me just give you a situation here of let's theorize a doctor here. A doctor with a political opinion. So this doctor is uh, you know a never Trumper. So the doctor is a never Trumper and then goes on the internet on Twitter and is constantly bashing Trump every day on Twitter. Now I don't care. I don't care if you bash anyone. It has I don't really fucking care about that. That is not the point of this. I, this is about identity and and security and so on. So you're on the fucking internet and you are a doctor. And you have just attached all of your political commentary on the internet, which will be read by your patients. And I guarantee that 50% of those patients will have a different, different political belief than you. It's just demographics. So I have to tell you right now that if you're a doctor, you're out there on the internet with your real fucking name, Say, I'm Dr. Smith, and I'm going out on Twitter saying things politically so that 50% of my customers or clients or patients uh, see uh, what I said. This applies to any, any uh, industry and any job and, uh, that has a public presence. Then I'm going to say you're sucking stupid. Okay? Because in your interest to explain, to show your political belief, you're hurting yourself and you could have done a better job of OPSEC by saying, let me create a different identity. How hard is it to create a second identity that is not does, that, that does not say Dr. Smith? My goodness, think OPSEC. Dr. Smith, Manipulate the data for Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith is perfection. Dr. Smith has no political beliefs. Dr. Smith doesn't uh, does not have any kind of uh, reaction to to uh, uh, current events. Dr. Smith is only about his patient, and that's the only thing he cares about. That is his only public image is his patients, and that promotes you, Dr. Smith. Then, A-hole Smith can do whatever he wants. Or, uh, let's not call him Smith, let's call him, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, Brax, the Brax guy. The Brax guy can be the A-hole. The Brax guy can go on Twitter and attack, uh, uh, you know, pol politicians directly. Uh, the Brax guy can do whatever he wants. That's what you fucking do. You don't combine the two. That is proper OPSEC. Now, how do you do this? Do not be stupid. Stupid thing to do is say, okay, I'm going to create another identity and I'm going to call it, uh, well, let's, use, let's not use Brax. Let's use something else. Uh, I'm getting interruptions here in the video. Sorry. Sorry, I'm getting interruptions in the video, but uh, hold on. Let me just get a uh, smooth video here. Hold on. That's right. Don't, don't call a. Uh, hold on. Let me just. Uh, okay, signals getting. Uh, I just want to make the signal stable. No, I didn't mean that. That that a hole. Uh, I I was just being extreme. Right? So let's come up with a different name. Um, uh, you know. Uh, Pervert John. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what your beliefs are. I don't care what your beliefs are. Okay? Pervert John. So you go on the internet and you say, oh, my name is Pervert John. Okay? So the question is, you know, how do you connect those two identities? You have Dr. Smith and Pervert John. You don't want those two mixed up. How do you mix them up? Easy. Don't use a VPN. 
If you don't use a VPN, then in seconds, then they've identified that pervert John equals uh, that uh, the pervert John equals Dr. Smith. So, you know, very stupid thing to do. I mean, you, you ought to have thought about this and, you know, you, you have to, to understand that whatever you say under the guise of your real name, it will be there permanently. So the best way is to create a fake name. It's called pseudo anonymity. Not better. I'm just being extreme again, <clears throat> being extreme to make it funny. Okay, the signal is kind of like up and down here. It's up and down. Signal's being up and down. So I'm just trying to, you know, wait for it to, you know, when I say certain things, notice that when I talk about things that uh, impact on three-letter agencies and the signal drops, wonder if there's any connection. Can I use my employer VPN? No. 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 Don't ever do that. Okay, so my point is you need to have proper OPSEC to create. And some of you think it's not important to create pseudo-anonymous identities on the Internet. And I'm saying that if you think that, then you are stupid. The Internet doesn't forgive. The Internet does not forget. The Internet is a very dangerous place. And you have to have pseudo identities well i think i'm being uh, i don't know am i being targeted here because i talk about mcafee and all that my my internet connection is unstable internet connection is unstable and maybe it's my title it's a very strange thing with the internet if i do certain titles in uh my internet connection is spotty. Just trying to wait for it to get stable here before I keep talking. Yeah, it's more than lagging. It's the, again. I I feel like uh, I feel like I'm being attacked here. So just just uh, wait a second here, and let it stabilize. The internet is a dangerous place for the past 20 years. Correct. Can we just erase the internet and start all... It wouldn't be nice if we can just erase the internet. Wouldn't it be nice to say, can we start fresh? But, you know, Google said we're going to buy, uh, you know, way, way, uh, way back machine. Okay, so anyway, it's smooth on Periscope because I'm sending at the lower resolution. Uh, I'm sending it at the HD level on YouTube, and YouTube is not getting a HD signal at all times. It's dropping sometimes. Okay? Okay, Frosty Flake. Okay, anyone who's not getting HD level is not getting the problem, but those who are getting HD level are going to see a lag because the, the uh, I'm being, I'm being, uh, I'm getting some DDoS here or something. Okay? And I don't know what the capabilities are, but I've noticed over the years that if I if I have certain topics, then I I seem to uh, to have a DDoS issue. Well, I don't have DDoS protection in my house, Mickey Sis AR, not at my house. How am I going to do that in my house? So if somebody is doing something to my house internet. Why HD will matter if SD? It matters because of the bit rate. If you're being DDoS, they can uh, they can DDoS you and lower your transmission rate. At 480, I should be fine. 720 might even be okay. Uh, the issue is when I do HD because uh, I'm actually transmitting at HD. I'm transmitting right now at HD, so... This is a 1080 transmission. Yes, what is the question? Uh, your residence, is there a balancing problem protecting people's anonymity and giving criminals a tool? Uh, 
if you understand what the government is capable of capable of doing then you will wipe out that logic very quickly they're more capable than you think i'm, I'm gonna let, like switch gears here for a moment uh i'm gonna switch gears for a moment here and talk about uh uh a threat level related to state players versus uh uh threat levels relating to hackers and doxers and just the average person on the internet the difference guys is the equipment and ability of somebody at the state level is completely different for example do you understand that your internet activity can be spied on easily i'm talking and when i say internet activity i'm talking about skype voice over ip i'm talking about internet the entire internet line i'm talking about every website you visit and so on and then voice if you go on the phone and talk and what what uh, uh what's on your voice all of those are actually hard-coded not a cost-benefit problem here they have hard-coded to make sure that it is easy to tap into those three channels which is all of you do what you do on the internet which is voice um uh voice over IP and internet, general internet. And it was actually put into law by Bill Clinton. Uh, it's called Kalia, K-A-L-E-A. -E so in the United States, the equipment is already configured at the switching stations so they can spy on whoever they want at the voice over IP level. So if you're using Skype and you think that Skype and Zoom and all these are, somebody was telling me today, uh, uh, oh, don't use Skype, use Zoom, it's secure. It's like, Zuck. Where did you Zucking hear that? Of course, any voice over IP is not secure. Voice over IP is not secure. Because Kalia says, Clear law says we're going to put the equipment to spy on voice over IP. Okay, same with uh, same with uh, internet. So if they want to see what what you're doing on the internet, they can do that. Now, if you're encrypting what you're doing on the internet, then obviously they can't do much of anything, and that's what you have to do. That's one of the threat factors and threat things that you do is say, well, I want to encrypt my traffic. Uh, one of the things that you do to encrypt your traffic is with a VPN. Now, why, why is a VPN uh, important? Because a VPN encrypts your traffic, internet traffic, from Kalia. Okay? So when you use, when you use, uh, when you use uh, uh, a VPN, you actually skip the ISP, which is the one bound by Kalia. Kalia does not require the ISP to decrypt what you do, all they know is that it's uh, encrypted, in which case it's hands off. So Kalia doesn't impact on that. If you're on a VPN, the ISP doesn't see anything. They just see an encrypted conversation. And so one of the ways to for the Internet side of what you do to skip Kalia automatically is to use a VPN. Now, this doesn't stop anyone depending on who your threat is, if you're fighting against a government, let's say you're a criminal, well, they will do all what they can, in which case they'll go to the VPN ISP and they'll put a listening post right where the VPN is and listen there. They can do that. Okay? So so it depends on uh, on who your, your threat is from and then you react accordingly so but for the average person simply doing something like doing a uh, vpn will even prevent the voice over ip from being subject to kalia spying so if you're use if you're using skype even a very simple thing uh as uh as putting a vpn on and there's a vpn right there bytes vpn you automatically skip through the equipment for Kalia. Kalia is uh, uh, communications assistance for law enforcement. Uh, what is it? Kali uh, communications assistant for law enforcement act. 
which was passed in 1995, and it's a law that mandates that the carriers, uh, like your Spectrum and your AT&T and so on, put spying equipment on the network to listen to your traffic if there's a warrant. Oh, there you go. Communications Assistant for Law Enforcement Act. Thank you for research, researching that, Mr. H. So, okay. So, if you use a VPN, it basically cancels out CALEA because the carrier, which is responsible for CALEA, doesn't get to see what's going on. Okay. So, so, so CALEA doesn't work with a VPN. They can still listen into your phone conversations but they don't get to see what's happening in the traffic. And that's why a VPN is a good solution for normal people who just don't want to be spied on. Now, if you're a criminal, they can still get you. If you're John McAfee, they can still get you. And, and uh, in which case, a VPN is not a solution for the John McAfee's of the world. Some people... <clears throat> Uh, some people uh, come to me and say, well, VPNs are useless. Yes, if you're John McAfee, a VPN is useless. Yes, I understand that. At that level, they, they have completely different needs. I'm going to tell you something that John McAfee said. Uh, why would they repeal CALEA? CALEA is a, is a wiretapping law. Of course, the, 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 the government has always had wiretapping capability since the beginning of time. <clears throat> that's not going to change. So who, who's going to vote against the capability to do wiretapping? They're not going to do that. They're going to say, well, we need it for, you know, tracking criminals. So anyway, it, you know, uh, criminals obviously know how to use a VPN too. So I don't, I don't even know what the purpose is. We've all seen how the warrant process is abused are EFISA, correct? The problem is if you trust government to, to do things, they will always take it to a level beyond and abuse it for their own purposes. And we don't know what their purposes are. We do not know what their purposes are. So you have to understand that. So if you're part of those who are like, uh, you know, sheep and you have nothing to hide, so you think the world is uh, all running peacefully and you don't need to care, then I'm sorry. Uh, you think Epstein... Uh, kill himself. Uh, you know, those of us who use are using our brains are probably thinking Epstein suicided himself, okay, or was was suicided, okay. There's a difference. Did he commit suicide or was he suicided? I think he was suicided, okay. So my internet connection is going to go down again because I said that. Okay, watch that. It's going to go down. So for, for those of you who are, uh, uh, hello, Af Afiel Navarro. Uh, for those of you who are, hello, uh, Wolf Puppy. Hello, Wolf Puppy. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You know, I haven't been in Periscope for a while, uh, so I'm kind of a rare presence on Periscope nowadays. Anyway, uh, in case you, uh, you missed this, and I'm going to repeat this. Sorry, the connection is slowing down here. In case you missed this, to repeat again, uh, on my channel here on YouTube, I will be interviewing uh, John McAfee. That's, uh, that's uh, I posted on Twitter. That's already been scheduled. I am, uh, I am interviewing John McAfee on this channel, and we want to find out. Uh, hello, why not? Uh he he no he ignores me and mentions that hurts. Uh, is there are you special kelp? Anything special about you? Uh, hello Russ. So uh, my channel is interviewing John McAfee, and I will publish a video, not next week, but the uh, week following, and uh, and uh, so yes. So uh, you will. Uh, and I get, because I'm in cybersecurity and all this, should be a more interesting topic than uh, so. There's a lot of interviews by John McAfee, and, and if you uh, don't know what questions to ask, then it may not be interesting. I, I want to be interesting, and we know the deep questions we want to ask, okay? And one of the things that McAfee said, for example, it was kind of crazy, and I had to think about it, I had to think about it, and he said... He said, the safest email, he said this, 
let's listen closely here. He said, the only safe email is Gmail. That's what he said. The only safe email is Gmail. Brax, research his background. Come on, Mel Gibson. I know his background all the way to McAfee days. Uh, watch the movie then. They're, they're coming up with a movie about Belize. Yeah, so, they're, you know, that's in a movie. So you can uh, see what the conclusion is of the movie. So I think two movies are coming out about him. So I, I don't know. Uh, will he sentence... Uh, what will be his sentence if you... He uh, he was indicted for uh, something to do with the IRS, but uh, uh, this is kelp again. So so uh, he was indicted uh, relating to the IRS, but certainly three letter agencies have been trying to kill him. So it's very interesting to know why they're trying to kill him, and they've made several attempts apparently. And uh, he's been poisoned several times. And, uh, you know, it, it'll be very interesting to find out. But anyway, that's going to be on this channel. I want to find out uh, uh, what uh, what he has to say. And uh, we'll see because he, uh, you know, he certainly knows. Uh, uh, go watch the movie Creative Group. <clears throat> They'll make statements here of you. Uh, you know, if you uh, don't actually know what happened, so so even even the government uh, uh, government of Belize has not even charged him with anything. So anyway, so we shall see. We shall see. That's not really important important right now. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so what he's saying about. Uh, about things is uh, some of you will say well he like some of you already said here on Periscope that he's a uh, conspiracy theorist okay so if you are cons a conspiracy theor uh, conspiracy theorist type then uh, or not a conspiracy theorist type then you actually believe that Epstein committed suicide uh, yeah Ep did Epstein commit suicide Or did he get suicided? <clears throat> Who pulled the strings if, if he was in fact suicided? Uh, who knows? We don't know. It's just these are interesting questions. So Kelp here, I'm sure, thinks that, uh, that Epstein killed himself. Why are you? I'm not worshipping anyone. <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, Epstein did suicide himself. Okay, there's kelp. <clears throat> okay, so we, I, I mean, that's expected. So anyway, if you think that uh, Epstein suicide himself, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, that'll be, that, that'll be interesting. It doesn't matter what, uh, what I believe, your resonance. It doesn't matter what I believe. I'm, uh, I don't have any facts to, uh, to uh, uh, say anything otherwise. But, uh, there you go, kelp. Uh, kelp uh, is there, and uh, so there you go. So, uh, do I believe that? Uh, do I believe that uh, Epstein killed himself? Uh, wow! You know, with information in front of you, uh, missing videos, missing people, guards disappearing, and you're saying, "Well, that's all coincidence," and it's like. Okay, uh, if, if you're like this kelp guy, then you will say, that's a just coincidence that all the guards disappear, the video disappear, and they happen to put him next to a, you know, a uh, known killer and put him next in the same cell. Oh, and we don't have guards at the exact moment. On and on and on, you're saying, uh, that's coincidence. And if you think that, then uh, good luck. Okay, so you, you have this, uh, you know, rose kind of colored lens in your eye and you think, you see the, the world like that, like, like kelp does. And the government spies on you and say, who, I don't care that the government spies on me. It's a good thing. Okay, that's the kelp that you see there. 
So if you are that kind of thinker, then you really don't need a VPN. You don't, you trust Google, you trust Apple, you trust Facebook, you trust everyone and put out your data out there and help put your sucking real name because what the suck are you doing doing that? You don't believe anything I say, put your real name out there, don't go talk here. Identify yourself with your real name with your real photo and stop this nonsense because you don't know what the duck you're talking about. Yeah, the camera broke. Okay. <clears throat> Cars were asleep. Camera disappeared. Nobody has any photo. Nobody has the camera. Just, yeah, all the videos disappeared. And, uh, and it's like, uh, th I mean, one thing happening. Yeah. Five different things happening in sequence is like the probability of that. The probability, guys, is just against logic <laughs> probability is against logic it's illogical so the question is are you going to be sheep and say wow uh, this is just an indication of what someone in power can do okay if you're powerful there's things you can do If you're powerful, things you can do. Okay? Sasquatch is not powerful. Fuck you. How come they can't trace me when they're using Twitter? You're, you're resonant because McAfee is a little smarter than they are. Uh, uh, he left a stun, dub, stun double. <laughs> uh, I, there's no doubt in my mind that you know, probability wise, it's too illogical for me for certain events to to match. And, uh, you know, and obviously all they have to do is get certain people to say certain words and then, you know, it gets ignored and then nobody will ever dig into it again. So there you go. So that's an example of, you know, uh, just just the state of the world. And you can say well it's a conspiracy theory and this and that it's like you know it's, it's, some of this is a little bit of common sense some of you are even up to the point where saying well Epstein is alive and all this and it's like come on who would want him alive if he knows secrets and he's gonna get okay <clears throat> so oh I have no doubt I have no doubt the question is who, why, and all that. And uh, so, anyway. So, so anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> back to, uh, back to, uh, by the way, uh, if you're, uh, if you're uh, talking on, uh, if you're talking nonsense on, if, uh, if you're talking nonsense on Periscope, I pro will probably ignore you, but if you talk on YouTube, I'll probably not ignore you. So, uh, so I don't believe Harvey was shot with a bullet cap gun me. I don't know about any of that. And this is just something that happened, you know, on my watch. And I think it's kind of weird. That's all I'm saying. Okay. It's kind of weird. I do have common sense. So I look at events as like, uh, okay, uh, no guard. Okay. No video. Uh, uh, cell, cellmate disappeared. Uh, I mean, the, the sequence of events is there's too many things that just happen in sequence. Uh, you know, probability wise, it just, it's just, you know, common math tells you it's not likely. So, anyway, I'm not on Periscope, but don't think my chats are showing up. Uh, your chats are showing up, Mikalix, but sometimes the uh, algorithm is blocking you because you're, don't put too many, like, you know, dangerous words there. You, you put the words like pedo and things and that gets blocked. Okay. Don't, don't use like hashtag pedo and this and that. Those are, you know, cameras disconnected. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, <clears throat> if you live in that kind of world where you think no one, your government cannot do anything bad and no one can do things like this, then uh, you have no idea about history. So uh, to somebody like Kelp, you know, the government can't do anything bad. So let me just tell you, uh, remind you a little bit about history. 
uh, you know, when the U.S. government planned on sinking a U.S. ship and to blame it on Cuba. And this was during the, uh, the 1960s, during the time of J.F. Kennedy. So uh, the general in charge proposed this plan to sink a U.S. Navy vessel uh, near Cuba and blame it on Castro so they could invade Cuba. So they were going to do a false, this is called false flag. This was, in fact, in history books, proposed by General uh, something Inger. Forget what his name is, okay? This is in the history books. They've done this before. It's not something new. It's always been done. So if you're, like, thinking, oh, no one will ever... Uh, no one will ever uh, uh, do anything uh, bad in this nation. You know, we have elected officials and everything is cool and it's it's all... Uh, uh, hold on a second here. Having bad signal messages here. Okay, so, you know, uh, everything is cool and we don't have to... Uh, uh, you know, we... we uh, <clears throat> the government... Uh, We'll never spy on you. So Obama, Obama. I mean, it's, it's just a, such a flat-out lie. I just can't, can't, you know. Uh, all presidents lie, but, you know, people, some, some of you are a big Obama fan, so I, I uh, was uh, flabbergasted when he actually went on TV and said, uh, the, we do not do mass surveillance, because Snowden obviously revealed there's mass surveillance. And 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 uh, uh, Kelp says uh, uh, Snowden is lying. <laughs> That's what Kelp does. So so uh, so uh, 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 I'll answer that a little later, your residence. But uh, so ma mass surveillance uh, is uh, according to Obama, mass surveillance is not being done on you because he said so on national TV. Is it did the you know, the U.S. government doesn't do mass surveillance to listen to all of your internet activity and all that. Uh, what is that? Is about the biggest lie I can imagine. Okay, I want Trump to go say that lie too, because he'll probably say that lie. Everyone will say that lie, and it's a lie. Okay, mass surveillance does occur. In uh, in one of my next videos, uh, I I have to cut out these kinds of videos because I don't get a lot of viewers when I do these kinds of videos. Uh, because nobody wants to, to hear about these things and they, they want to think that the world is all, all simple uh, and that AT&T isn't collecting your data and sending it to Utah, which they are. So according to Obama, it doesn't exist. And, and yet what they really meant, and this is the political, political speak that I'm talking about and how politicians will twist the words around. He says, well, we're not really looking at your data. Okay, now watch that word. He's justifying that he's not looking about your, at your data because they're just collecting it. They're collecting the data. So until they look at it in their mind, well, nobody looked at your data, even though it's automated, automated programs are, are searching through keywords. Nobody looked at your data precisely, so we're not spying, we're not doing mass surveillance. Uh, even though everything we do in this country is being recorded and put into uh, the database at the Utah Data Center, okay? They have $4 billion worth of servers storing your data. A computer is cheap. They spent $4 billion on it. $4 billion. Okay? Every politician likes daily. What are you talking about? Is there something new that I don't know about? Do, do you think I treat Trump any differently? All politicians. I just haven't seen Trump say anything about mass surveillance and such issues. Do you think Bush didn't lie? Of course. He started the Zucking Patriot Act. <clears throat> Hello, Santiago. So, no, I, I don't. Uh, they're no different. All politicians are the same. All politicians are the same. So don't don't get into zucking politics here. It's not about politics. 
don't get into zucking politics, okay? If you're here to make, make political comments and uh, you're missing the point. The point is all politicians, and I don't care what their party is, they're all the same. Do you think that uh, Dianne Feinstein thinks differently than, uh, you know, what's his name in the, the Senate uh, on the Conrin? Uh, or Cornyn, or whatever his name is, from Texas. They're, they're all the same. They all think the same thing. Spy, spy, spy. Spy, spy on each individual citizen. We're not doing anything wrong, but let's get spied on. So, so they will justify and make, you know, political speak, and they say, well, I didn't lie. I told you we don't, we don't read your data. Uh, uh, you know, if you're not a criminal, and we don't look at it. Uh, you know, it's like... Uh, now, if you're like sheep, you know, like kelp here, kelp is the epitome of sheep because he actually talks and believes that the government has no ever have any evil intent in collecting all this data. And I say, suck you. I lived in a government where they did collect the data. And fortunately, there was no internet back then. But if there were, I'd be zucked. Okay, people I know have been jailed for having a, you know, political belief that's different or going against the dictator and if you believe that the world is so simple then go live in fucking Iran okay go live in Iran and tell me that so I don't know some of you probably don't like what I want to say here so it's okay you can uh, unfollow me and unsubscribe to my channel if you think that the world is all simple and everything is hunky dory like kelp if that's what you do please do not follow me please do not subscribe to me because that's not what you're going to hear from me okay <clears throat> I'm, i have a little bit more experience with life and, and i know the reality that this is very 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 dangerous world and now we have a few people that control the information a few Okay, and so they can control the press, they can do things, and they can say, okay, we want to make things change and disappear. We want Epstein to disappear. We don't want to hear from Epstein. We don't want him in court. We want him to shut up and not, not say a word. It's very important that no one gets to hear what he has to say. And there you go. And you're saying, oh, he suicided himself. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I, what is the I, what is the unproven conspiracy theory that I'm talking about here? I don't talk about any unproven. I'm not here to talk about Zucky 9/11 or anything that you think. You know, this is not a conspiracy channel. Okay. But if you're coming here and telling me that we don't do mass surveillance, I'll show you the press, the actual. Well, aside from Snowden, that has not been disproven by anyone. Uh, and all the uh, three-letter agency programs, you, you have to be stupid to not know. Uh, go to Wikipedia. You can look at all the different three-letter programs. If you don't believe it, then Wikipedia must be zucking wrong because that's what, <clears throat> that's what, uh, that's what Kelp thinks. That's what Kelp thinks. That, you know, uh, don't tell me about Libra. It's Zuck. So that's what Kelp thinks because, you know, if, if you uh, think it's, uh, there's something wrong, then go live in that world. But I will not, and that's why I will not share my data with the, with a government that I don't know what they're going to do with my Zucking data. I do not want to participate in this. I do not want to participate in that. Okay? That's not my deal. Not my deal. Today, there are teams of MS for PRC spotted in San Diego by the CHP. Uh, what is PRC? Uh, I've heard of uh, Flatter. <laughs> it's like... So uh, don't tell me about flat earth and all this nonsense, okay? We're only talking about basic things. So are you, are you in fact being subjected to mass surveillance? Yes, no. Is that a conspiracy theory? If you think mass surveillance is a conspiracy theory, do you not think, okay, I'll be, be more specific. Is there mass surveillance in Saudi Arabia? Very, okay, I'll, let's step away from the United States for a moment. Is there mass surveillance in Saudi Arabia? Can somebody answer me that? Is there mass surveillance in Saudi Arabia? 
Very simple question. Kelp, Kelp, answer that, please. Is is that a conspiracy theory when I say there? Uh, I asked the question: Is there mass surveillance in Saudi Arabia? Thank you, Ross. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> so for those of you who don't think there's mass surveillance in Saudi Arabia, which is of course using the same equipment used in the United States and China and all all of that. Uh, then, uh, yeah, if you don't think that's happening, well, talk to Randy Horton on Periscope and YouTube. He is in Saudi Arabia. And guess what he does in Saudi Arabia? Guess what he does in Saudi Arabia? He sells the spying equipment. That's what he does for a living. He sells the spying equipment to Saudi Arabia. Okay, now you're going to tell me, well, they only do that in Saudi Arabia. Zuck, Zuck, no, the equipment comes from the Zucking United States. Now, I'm going to tell you some more. Because some of you are just like kelp, just like, you know, in your dream world. Okay, so they had a, a spy convention in Europe. Law enforcement spy, con or spy something, spy, con I forget the name. I, I was going to do a video about it. And they were demonstrating all, they were interviewing them on YouTube and demonstrating all this spy equipment that can listen to your phone calls and, and listen to every phone in, a, in an area. Uh, you know, uh, advanced versions of Stingray with auto recording devices and auto tracking all this, like, uh, you know, like a Stingray, uh, Stingray on steroids. And they were demonstrating this and drones that do this kinds of things and drones that do any number of things, including attack. And this was being demonstrated in this trade show attended by, uh, you know, people in law enforcement. And they were asked the question, uh, your device is, uh, does, isn't this like mass surveillance? And then the, uh, the salesperson says, with a smile on his face, says, we just provide the tools. We just provide the tools. We, you know, we, it's up to you how you use it. This is just a toolkit, as Kelp said, just a toolkit. It's up to you to decide if this is something that can be used for bad things. Of course, it's going to be used for bad things. You just gave them the sucking capability, and there is no law that stops them. And you're going to tell me, well, this is theoretical. They don't have spy equipment. Are you sucking crazy? Go watch the stuff on YouTube. They actually went to the convention and spoke to the people that build this equipment. So you're telling me they don't do that. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's just utter craziness to uh, some of the stuff that, you know, that's utter craziness to say that this is not going to be used against you because that's what kelp does. Kelp wants you to not care that the government can spy on you and innocent people get, get in the crossfire, get their data collected. And it's like, you know, um, if somebody wants to dig dirt on you and put you to, uh, for example, for example, let's say that a, uh, a, uh, one of these spying devices spotted your activity and uh, let's say you were... Uh, Let's say you uh, you were having an extramarital affair, and it was caught on this uh, on this uh, you know tracking listening device by some government entity. Okay, now you're having a extramarital affair, which is obviously a bad thing. Don't don't recommend that or propose that you you support that. But there's no law against it, so it's not a it's not in the purview of the state. It's in the purview of morality. So let's say that a murder happened uh, nearby. Let's say half a mile away there was a murder. So now they, they, they check all the devices and they go spy and, and say, okay, we found all these people in there. And then they find uh, that these two people were found in a motel nearby near the murder scene. And now their data is in the crosshairs. Uh, they have a constitutional right for that data and information to be protected because they're not part of a crime. This is what the Constitution 
uh, uh, prevents it, and it's uh, uh, protection against illegal search and seizure. So they're not supposed to have that data collected on them or used in any kind of a way or pre presented in court or part of a data collection because it's not part of the crime. But yet, for somebody like Kelp, it's like, uh, who cares? Throw them under the bus. We don't care. That is not a zucking democracy. Hey, Loretta, that is not a zucking democracy. That is not what this country is about. But no, they're changing that. They're changing that. So this country is now about, oh no, we, we will be controlled by a few. And here's the sad part, guys. The, the, the people who control the mass surveillance are not even elected. They're not elected. They control the infrastructure. They control the infrastructure. I'm smarter than you, Retta, on this. You don't have to question me on this, Retta. I thought about it. You, you should think about, you should watch my last video, which should apply to you as well, and you think about what I just said there, because you need that help, right? Now, seriously, especially for you. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, uh, and good to see you here, Reddit. Good to see you. So, so if you understand that the people in that control the mass surveillance and all that really have no checks and balances. They're really down deep in the depths of the Utah Data Center and, and Fort Meade, Fort Meade and, and wherever else they are in Maryland and Virginia. And they have information and they can release information as they wish to the public or to presidents and basically manipulate the events just by information release. It's information security. Information, the release of information can control governments and can control public opinion. If I hide information and I release certain information, I can change people in power. No, I, Reda, I'm talking about a specific thing about OPSEC, operational security, because you use your real name. That's what I'm talking about, Reda. It's, it's not an attack on you. I'm just uh, talking about the fact that, uh, uh, you know, I planned out my internet experience from the beginning. And I, I don't come here blind. I understand what I'm doing and why, why I'm here. If you wanted to dox uh, 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 why would I dox you? What, uh, what have you done to me? <laughs> you know, you think like doxing is like, uh, is like uh, uh, you know, an easy thing that I would just do it. Uh, no, doxing is time consuming, so I don't do it unless somebody's attacking me. So anyway, uh, Brax Box will be illegal within five years. Dr. Martin was having affairs. J. Edgar Hoover found out about it. Hoover's three-letter agency contacted King and told him that if he didn't commit suicide, they publicly revealed the affair. <laughs> not surprising if that's true I have no idea that's true or not I didn't read that but um, you know this is in the history books Nixon uh, uh, came up with a list of gay people and what he uh, he blacklisted you know during the McCarthyist uh, period uh, you know the, Mac the McCarthyist blocked the uh, supposed socialists and communists from Hollywood and uh, put them on a blacklist so they couldn't get jobs in Hollywood. That, that was in the McCarthy period in the 1950s, and then that got repeated with gay people uh, during the time of Nixon in the 70s. So if you're saying that this doesn't happen, you're, you're in dreamland, you know, it does happen every day, okay? It does happen. So you, 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 have, to, you have to understand uh, the, the world we live in and understand, you know, that it's, it's not... Uh, it's all, all, not all nice and cozy. Uh, keep your notes and written and pay a lawyer to release it to the right people to press if you're under unrightful prosecution. Uh, yeah, uh, McAfee claims to have a dead man switch. So anyway, to get, to get back to, uh, to uh, uh, before I, uh, I forget again, I'm, for those of you who did not uh, hear this, uh, I am interviewing... 
uh, John McAfee in this channel, uh, and I will post uh, I will post a video uh, not next week but the following week. So, uh, like midweek of the following week, I'll post a video of a interview with of an interview with John McAfee. Yes, uh, Starlight, that's correct. Uh, so that will be in uh, uh, coming coming soon. So I'm going to ask him some hopefully interesting questions about uh, his uh, little conflict with Deep State. I really am interested to, to know uh, about his conflict with, with Deep State. Okay, so, so uh, the question again, um, uh, my residence was, how does he do the internet? How does a Mac? How does a McAfee protect himself since he can? Uh, he can't. Uh, a VPN is not enough protection at the state level. If your enemy is a state, VPNs are not sufficient. You you got to go Tor or better. So somebody like Mac uh, Snowden uses Tor. Now there are other ways to do it, and and I'm going to tell you one way, and it's kind of illegal. So it's not something that uh, McAfee doesn't care about illegality. So he'll do it. Uh, but this is something that hackers will do. I'll, I'll tell you right now, just so you, you understand, that there are other techniques you can do. I would never do it. So if somebody said, do you do this? I will guarantee you, I do not. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that McAfee does not use Tor. He uses something better. Okay, and what is this better? Don't type that here, Mel Gibson. That is a very bad word to type in here. Okay, uh, first, if you're a hacker, you can do this. Uh, what a hacker does is they create a botnet. So you have not Tor, but you have your personalized Tor by creating a botnet. So you, you attack all those people with nothing to hide. So grandma's computer and, you know, grandpa's computer and, and the kid's computer and you know, your wife's computer and all that get attacked because you don't have any security precautions on the device and they put a bot on it. Very simple thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a very easy thing to do. So you create a botnet and you attack these servers and these computers and you put code in there and then what you put in there is a routing code, routing. So what happens is you connect to the computer in question and the computer will listen to you and then route your traffic elsewhere, maybe to the next junction using their IP address, the IP address of the captured botnet device and pass it to the next device and however many in the loop, maybe two or three uh, of these, you put them in a chain randomly. Let's say you have a pool of, uh, you know, 500 computers in a botnet and you every every uh, every moment you change and change the loop and these people have DSL connections in their house and you attack the computer with DSL connection and while they're watching Netflix somebody is attacking their servers and sending traffic kelp do not be stupid kelp oh my gosh I just told you what this is and kelp said for what purpose This is your private secret network, private secret network, where you're using somebody else's IP address. You just built your own onion. The hackers do this. Go to DEF CON. I'm sure those guys do this, but if you get caught, it's illegal. This is an illegal thing to do because it's actual hacking. I do not hack people. Do not claim that I do this. I do not do this. He's on, th this person is on Periscope. I'm, I'm live streaming on Periscope and, and YouTube. Okay. I mean, am I, what, am I, what I'm talking about, is this like rocket science? No. However, it is illegal. Okay, it is illegal to do. Now, would I do it? No, I'll use a VPN. I don't need to go have somebody come and say I'm doing something illegal. I'm not going to go hack somebody else's computer, even if it's just grandma and grandpa who are not going to complain. So there are computers that are hacked 
that are using this. If you have a chain of 500 of these computers, you can send your signal around all day and no one will ever find you and you will be appearing to, to be in Iowa and uh, Missouri and so on. That has nothing to do with I2P, you residents. Uh, uh, I2P is, uh, is a less popular version of Tor. Uh, okay, I don't know what you call it. You just make your own. Do you need to call anything? I mean, it's, this is not some secret thing to do. It's easy to do. Okay, you, you, you hack computers using some common flaw, and uh, once you, uh, you hack, the, maybe you send a bunch of emails saying that uh, Windows 7, which you hopefully have gotten a lot of these, uh, hopefully you have, you've gotten a lot of these emails already, and you did not click on them, but a lot of you got clicks that says, Windows 7 is expiring. What are you going to do? Then you click on it, you've just been hacked. Okay, are you getting all these emails right now about Windows 7? Who has not gotten an email about Windows 7? <clears throat> okay, so Windows 7, uh, Microsoft isn't sending me any notices about Windows 7, so obviously these are all Indian Indian hacker guys sending sending these emails trying to get me to click on it and they click on it and they can insert malware and one of the malwares they can insert is of course something to do with something that I just talked about that's one of the possible ways of doing it and you don't need that many it's like if you can if you can uh, if you can uh, hack you know 500 computers and keep it quiet and when you have your secret botnet and shared with your friends and then all of you are basically using uh, 500 innocent people and then sending them traffic that could be uh, uh, you know people trying to hide from three-letter agencies and then the three-letter agencies then go go visit these people and say uh, we're you know these people are uh, are uh, you know doing illegal things and they find out it's grandma so yes there are other ways to do it besides besides you know Tor and VPN but they're not legal VPN and Tor are the legal ways we can do it, and they have limitations. But if you want, if you want to go beyond the legal, yes, there's things you can do, and it's I don't like it. There's another company that's selling a service that actually pay the grandmas and the grandpas to use their DSL connection to do exactly what I'm talking about, but they're paid and they're legally doing it. And this is a corporate thing, and this is a company selling the service. To actually uh, uh, hide your IP address, but in a legit way, by using uh, uh, these networks, and they're actually paying these people. To say, we'll pay for your internet, but let us use your IP address. And so these people then get a discount on their uh, uh, or even free internet, uh, so they get uh, uh, to to use that. So Snowden using Tor, likely to, uh, Snowden is using Tor. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, likely Snowden is using Tor. Snowden is using Tor. So was Assange when he was there. But uh, is McAfee using Tor? I mean, he's being hunted down. I, I would say no. I would say no. So I'm just saying to you that if you don't understand how technology works... And you, you live in this, you know, world that everything is like hunky dory and, and things are smooth and nothing ever happens and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, protecting yourself and uh, how you, you, why you need a Linux phone and all this. Uh, that's why I wanted a Linux phone. I, you know, unfortunately, these devices are, are now spy devices. One of the things that, that uh, McAfee himself said, and and some of you would say, well, why would I listen to McAfee? Who cares what you want to listen to? I'm just telling you about a guy who knows something that I don't. McAfee does not use a phone. Well, he does use a phone, but he has no SIM card on it. He doesn't use the SIM card. He only uses the internet on it, on wi on uh, 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 likely on Wi-Fi. Okay, which is even that's not not even safe. So he doesn't use he doesn't use a SIM card because if he uses a SIM card, they'll find out where he is. Okay, can you run Wicker app over Tor? Probably. Okay, um, antivirus is the best way to open your computer to viruses and privacy breaches. Thank you, Matt Cow. That's uh, that's my video right there. So give you another topic uh, here where where. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, if if you're hiding from the CIA and the NSA, no. 
No. So, uh, is it good enough for the rest of us? Yes, because we don't want to go do anything illegal. If you know, if I had a way to do something that's legal and it's better than tour, I would do it. But if I don't have, I don't have any legal options. The legality is down to VPN and tour. That's legal. Beyond that, it's not legal. I want to use that, but it's not legal. So anyway, uh, some of the things that he said, which is kind of interesting, and I had to study it, was the uh, comment comment by McAfee that says Gmail is the safest email. Okay, we all know that Gmail reads your email. Is there anyone here who doubting that? Maybe Kelp doesn't think that, but anyone else think that Gmail is not reading your email? If you think that Gmail is not reading, not, and I say not reading your email, Type 1. If you think that Gmail is reading your email, type 2. Again, if Gmail is reading your email, type 1. If you don't think they're reading your email, no, no, I, I got that wrong. Type 1 is if you're they're not doing anything bad. Type of 2 if you think they are doing something bad reading your email. Okay, is Gmail reading your your uh, your uh, your email or not? So, so uh, uh, Uriah says no, they're not reading your email. So I want to see the ones who's not reading your e who says it's not reading your email. Russ thinks you're not reading email, or do, I, do you mean that? Rea changed to two. Double J thinks they're not reading your email. Lakuta Saborg said they're not reading your email. One is they're not re reading. Just to make it clear, one means they're not reading it. You're safe. Nick says they're not reading it. So, so McAfee says... So McAfee says that Gmail is the safest email. Okay. You have to understand the threat level that McAfee is dealing with. McAfee does not care if Gmail is reading his email. He doesn't care. The reason is he's worried about his life. I mean, what is so? What if he uh, they read your email? If he's it's they're not killing him. What he's more worried about is, is somebody going to kill him by reading the email? So he wants to keep the data away from three-letter agencies who are trying to kill him. Okay, so again, for normal people, I do not want Gmail to read my email. But if I were running away uh, from the government, I'm going to say, well, I don't really care. That's the least of my problems right now. What I more care about is, is, is Gmail, is a government reading the email. And because it's a large corporate entity, here's the problem that I think is being solved by the Gmail that I didn't think about to today. Let's say you're using webmail. Webmail only, by the way, not, not a client. I'm only talking about webmail. So you're, you're going to use Gmail. And uh, Gmail now implements encryption between you and their server. So the first leg is encrypted. Let's say the person you're talking to is also on Gmail. So now their connection to the server, the Gmail server, is encrypted. The unencrypted portion of email is called SMTP to SMTP or the peer-to-peer -peer port 25 transmission between two servers. So if you're on Yahoo and you're on Gmail, those two servers will talk to each other and open up the traffic on port 25, unencrypted, that is being captured by three-letter agencies. Guarantee you that is happening. Port 25 traffic, SMTP to SMTP, that is being captured by three-letter agencies. Now, here's an interesting thing that's happening. Since you're on Gmail to Gmail, you're talking to somebody on Gmail, the reality is there's never any SMTP traffic that goes out. It stays inside Google. 
so that the traffic doesn't go out unencrypted. So now I said, well, that's pretty smart. So if you're talking to somebody on Gmail and hiding from a government, then that's right. Within Gmail itself, you're actually not uh, exposing your email traffic as long as you don't use an email client that exposes that. So uh, uh, with the proper encryption, TLS. So if you have a TLS connection to Gmail, uh, then you're okay if the other person is also on Gmail. Okay? Okay. Uh, so, not POP3, just, you know, uh, 465, you know, 88, what is it, uh, 99, 995, you know, all the upper numbers, not 25, and POP3 is one, what's POP3? 120 something, I forget. Okay, they do, cannot, there's no crypto on SMTP. Okay, 587 and 465, those are, those are good. Okay, so... As long as the you you uh, the the uh, intended recipient is in the same domain, in this case Gmail, it is not going to go through SMTP on port twenty five. Server to server traffic is port twenty five, and that's the one that's being intercepted by three letter agencies. So so, I said you know, McAfee's smart. I mean he he understands that. So he uh, he thought about it and said, well, I don't really care. I have to think about what he what what he's doing, and it's like okay, I don't need to care if Google's reading it, which they are. They can sell me stuff and whatever and track me, but you know, uh, I need to be alive first. Uh, one ten, one ten, Mad Cow Scrack. It is one ten. Who cares about PGP? That's not going to help you. Okay, metadata will show what you're up to. So port 25 is the SMTP open channel, which is server to server that you're not aware of that goes on on the internet and that's being captured. I have that in another video. Okay? So, so uh, given that, given that, then uh, surprisingly, he's correct. Uh, Gmail can be made safe if the person you're talking to is also on Gmail, but understand that Gmail is reading it. Therefore, you have to say, well, what am I going to put in my email account that I need to, to care about? Uh, if you are using Gmail like I am, which is nonsense, I don't put anything important in email ever, then it doesn't matter. So, so uh, what is port 25 local? It's not local. Port 25 is the server-to-server -server SMTP connection unencrypted. Okay. So, so if you understand the threat and you start thinking about when do I use what and what, and in, in McAfee's case, he doesn't care that, uh, that uh, Google's profiling him. And why should he care? He's already famous. Everyone knows the story about McAfee. So, you know, but I don't want to get my life story on the Internet. Uh, would you like your story about uh, all your family and how you got divorced and how you had this girlfriend in high school and you know all this uh, how your uh, your kid is not talking to you how you know all these kinds of typical stories how you uh, your uh, uh, your ex wife is uh, you know speaking against you and saying bad things about you on Facebook these are things that are common on on you know uh, an internet experience. And if you want that to go on, you talk about that on Gmail, and Gmail knows that. Uh, but to a McAfee, that's not important. He, he, in his threat level, that's not what he's worried about. He's worried about his life. Okay, so, so you have to understand. Hunt unpublished book to unpub OTP. Hunt hit unpub book to unpub book. That would ruin my book. Google is still using analytics to fingerprint your writing in your emails. Uh, yikes. Uh, that a surprise, Brick? Uh, Facebook, ma fake book, marriage, divorce, over and over. Then you're sitting inside providers like, uh, G Google, MIT, and attacks can still happen. Uh, sounds like homing pity at pigeons. Flashcards delivered by counter. I'm asking people to snow and as many people have no idea who snow and is, uh, uh, 
uh, when is the McAfee interview? Uh, I'm not announcing the actual date of the McAfee interview. I'm just saying when I'm posting the video. The video will be posted <coughs> uh, probably midweek, uh, the week after next. That's probably when I will post it. I'm not telling you when the actual interview is going to occur. Because uh, they might DDoS my computer. Yes, they fingerprint your voice. That's a Snowden reveal that they fingerprint your voice. Yes. Uh, Google reads encrypted communication once it's decrypted on the device. Uh, uh, they don't need to do that. They already have it encrypted on, uh, decrypted for email because they own the server. It's not encrypted on the Gmail server. They can read that. Uh, here's a uh, thing that's very interesting just to show you how you don't understand the risk. Uh, you know, people like uh, Kelp just has no understanding of the world we're in. So a lot of you will load a keyboard, custom keyboard on your Android device or even your Android. Apple device. So you put a custom keyboard on and a custom keyboard could send anything you type on the internet to someone else. So you can be on Signal, you can be on Matrix, Talks, Discord, the, you know, whatever whatever the, uh, the uh, platform is, you might get snowed in tonight. Uh, if you go into a different platform that's uh, supposedly encrypted, but you're using one of these keyboards that are spying on you, you have what is called a keylogger. Well, apparently that's actually happened. So some keylogger thing was, was placed on Android devices, and uh, so Google was able to, because uh, it was doing uh, something like word searching and such, and was going to the cloud, kind of like Alexa. And it was actually sending whatever you're typing on the keyboard to the cloud to Amazon. It was pretty crazy. And people don't think. Uh, that's, that's not an issue. We don't need to worry about that. It's not an issue. So I was like, uh, Zog people, wake up. <laughs> Yo. Why? Why do we live in a world where we have to, I have to worry about these kinds of things? Unfortunately, that's the way it is today. <clears throat> no, Uriah, no. There, why would I be blocked? What's going to block that traffic? So, uh, no, nothing will block that traffic. So, uh, so uh, you've just opened up a side channel, so, so to speak. That is the one way that uh, three-letter agencies want to attack you is pre-encryption. If they can spot what you're doing on the screen before encryption, then they would love you. So that's why Linux Linux uh, uh, devices are better because they're open source. So they're not going to be able to hide secrets like that. Well, oh, we're doing little secret things. We can see it in the source code. Okay, so just understand what I'm talking about here. No one else will tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it here at a much deeper level. Okay, much deeper level. And this is why I'm telling you, you know, to protect yourself and to be careful. Now, to, to summarize, and you really, if you haven't watched my video uh, on OPSEC, you, you really need to watch that. It's not a popular video, I, you know. Because people don't want to hear all the bad news. It's kind of a, a video that exposes some of the issues here. And you need to... I don't even think Kelp will ever watch that video. Okay, so it's my new latest video. It's an OPSEC. It's one of my least popular videos. I, th I don't think it even got a thousand views in 24 hours. I don't think it got a thousand views in 24 hours. Which is very low for me. So... Uh, so according to Google, it's 40% uh, lower traffic than usual. So typically I'll get like 1,500 views a day. So, <clears throat> so it's saying that I, I am not, uh, I, apparently that I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, uh, getting attention with that video. But that video is discussing uh, what you have to think about. And it doesn't propose complete solutions. It's more saying, can you assess what you want to accomplish? And then based on what you want to accomplish, how do you want to attack that with a plan 
uh, a OPSEC plan. So as an example, do you want to create two identities, three identities, four identities? Uh, do you need a VPN? Yes, you, you do need a VPN. So it <clears throat> doesn't matter what you, let, you create, uh, uh, let's say kelp creates two identities on the internet and one is called kelp farming and the other one is, uh, is uh, his real name, which is John Kelp, let's say, okay? So he's kelp farming here, and but he has a real name, and his real name is John Kelp, okay? Or maybe it's John Kelly, that's close enough. It says John Kelly is actually kelp, let's say, okay? So he doesn't use a VPN. So how long do you think the AI will figure out that John Kelly is John, is kelp farming? Milliseconds? Milliseconds? Well, certainly sites like Twitter and Periscope and YouTube will know that because they'll say, oh, same person. And treat it accordingly. Because you didn't think about OPSEC. Okay? So, no, I'm kidding. Crime Stoppers, I'm just giving, I don't know what Kelp's real name is, please. I've never doxed Kelp. I've no, I have no business uh, uh, doxing Kelp. Kelp has not done anything bad to me. I have not spent any second, not one, doxing kelp. It's not, not a priority. Uh, he hasn't done anything bad to me. So anyway, uh, my point is that that's an example of bad OPSEC where you said, I'm going to do something, but then you didn't think it through because you're being identified by multiple pieces of data. And once the powers to be collect two two uh, name, two uh, pieces of data, and the data that the data items that you need to worry about are your real name, your uh, phone number, your email address, your IP address, and a browser fingerprint and facial recognition. Okay? I don't have the interview yet, and I don't know if I'm going to post it on, on Periscope, uh, you res your resonance. Watch it on YouTube when the time comes. So anyway, if two pieces of this data is, is sent with your internet traffic, so they have an IP address and your name, they can then match that to another IP address with another name, and they say these are the same people. So it just takes two pieces of data to make the match. And then they store it in the database. And let's say you let's say you went to a website called uh, um, I don't know uh, who who else is here. Let's say you went to a website called madcow.com. Okay, and two people uh, and 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 they spotted your real name and your IP address. And then the other one went to crimestoppers.com with a different name and the same IP address, but they know that it's a residential address, so then they will combine the two people and say the AI now knows that Crime Stoppers and Mad Cow are related and they live in the same house and they're connected in some way and then suck. So if you don't think that because you don't understand how technology works, then you will be zucked. So I'm just telling you, you have to understand how this all works. And you can ask me questions. You can ask me questions uh, and uh, and I will explain to you if there's any flaw in it. And it's different. Again, somebody like McAfee has a different set of criteria for for his his hiding because he's hiding from a government. Uh, we are not hiding from a government. We don't need that kind of level of protection. We are okay with a VPN. Uh, <clears throat> so we don't... Uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, I want to reward you in Periscope, but uh, you know it's it's more important to uh, you know use my uh, YouTube account, uh, your resonance. Um, it's it's a sad thing, but uh, I I haven't uh, grown my my following on Periscope at all. Let me see if did I even get any followers. Uh, how many followers do I have right now? Did did my follower count increase during this broadcast? Because for, to be honest with you, in in uh, 
in uh, one year of Periscope, uh, I had 30,000 followers, and now I think I had 30,500 followers, and now I have 30,200 and some followers on Periscope. It went down from 30,000. Okay? In the same period, I got 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. So you tell me. You tell me. So, so uh, I know Big Al, but I want you all to uh, understand, uh, you know, Support me. Well, support me, my friends. You know, I will broadcast on, on Periscope, but please support me on YouTube because uh, uh, that's what we're, it's going to pay the bills. So if, if you don't support me, then uh, I don't know if I can keep doing this. So support me on on uh, support me on on uh, uh, on. Well, I already bailed on Periscope. I just went back. This is just my second broadcast in 2020 on Periscope. So, so I I do have certain things that you know I make these products that are actually uh, innovative. So I have made the first one, which is a wired VPN router, so that you can make your entire house a all of your Wi-Fi router. Let's say you have five Wi-Fi routers in your house, you can make them all VPN and pass it through my new device. It's pretty incredible. You can't, that's pretty hard to do cheaply. And I managed to uh, to do that for you. That's one of the things that I've done. And of course, I have my Bytes VPN uh, service, which uh, is there, which you can use with the, the Brax Wi-Fi, the Brax router. Uh, if you're not McAfee, so you don't have to worry about you know what the best protection is for average people. You need to stop them from collecting the data or doing mass surveillance or anything like that, and you do it through a Brax router. This router is one fifty nine, and if you connect it to there's I have a video about it called the you know my home network my dope home network setup. Uh, so if you, you uh, pass your traffic through here, uh, wired, wired, it's on, my, it's on the description. Go to my uh, brax.me website. So uh, don't say bad words, Starlight. It, you know, I, I'm going to get a, uh, say Z-H-I-T or something. It's 12.25 there. Well, it's 10.27 here. Uh, so anyway, this is on rob.brax.me. Have you read what the reporter Rob McAfee's experience? Uh, have you? <laughs> Kelp. I don't really care. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I am not judge and jury. I, I want to get knowledge that uh, helps you. And, you, you know, I, I'm not here to uh, to go and criticize and things things that I don't know the answer to uh, uh, I, all I'm saying is there's there's a uh, there's information information that helps us and if you uh, if you want to say well we don't want to listen to that because Kelp says so <clears throat> okay if you if you don't want to if you don't want to you know uh, learn then uh, that's doesn't matter to me I, I'm not uh, I'm not supporting uh, McAfee's uh, uh, you know thing that he likes drugs and alcohol and all this that's uh, that's none of my business okay that's not uh, that doesn't concern my channel what concerns my channel is that <clears throat> he has information that is definitely useful to us. Just like Snowden has information that's useful to us, and uh, and don't just put pearls before. Yes, I will not. Zir zircone. Okay, so you know this this is stuff that is of benefit. Uh, uh, Rob dot brax dot me. It's on the description of the video. Just go to brax me. <laughs> Go to okay. I'll give you a shorter way if you're already on Brax Me. Hello, Girl Rush fan. Good to see you again. Okay, what what you do is you go to rob.brax.me and you click on my 
my uh, picture and it goes to my profile so if you search me on Brax and you'll find me everywhere and you click on my pic and you see my profile and then I have a store on my profile it's not on the store of Brax me it's in my profile there's a store there happy new year girl rush fan I haven't seen you in my goodness years certainly not all of last year I haven't seen you good to see you again Girl Rush fan is on on uh, Periscope here. Yeah, so we are on YouTube here. So this is a YouTube video, Girl Rush fan. So you're you're in a permanent YouTube video. So uh, I want to see what you can get him to say. Well, I, it's not what I can get him to say. He will. He's very easy to talk to. Uh, you know, he's very easy. To, thank you for inviting Girl Rush fan. He's very easy to talk to. What what is uh, interesting is what what we can learn from it. Because, uh, you know, he has a little different experience if, you know, he, uh, the, uh, he has some secrets. And because of the secrets that he knows, the uh, three-letter agencies want to suicide him just like, just like Epstein. Okay? So they want to suicide him. Okay? Uh, fortunately, I don't know any information myself, so they can't, uh, they can't want me suicided because I'm useless. So, but yes, so uh, McAfee, uh, McAfee is, uh, is uh, definitely on the suicided list. They, they want him to make sure he gets suicided. Okay? That's a new word now, suicided. Okay, so like international man of mystery. So, uh, you know, if you, uh, so if you, uh, thank you, you residents. Thank you if you support and, and buy my products. I really appreciate it. So, so, uh, by the way, the, the, the product is, is kind of innovative to do a wired router. This is a Wi-Fi router before, and I spent the time to turn it into wired routing, which is even more uh, interesting and, and simplified thing, because you don't have to worry about this being, because some of you say, well, I need a fancy Wi-Fi router with AC and WPA3 and all the fancy features, and this doesn't have it. That's okay, because you can use this wired. So now you're routing your entire house to the VPN. And do you, do you understand the simplicity of that? You don't have to set up VPNs on any device. You don't have to think about it. And it's now only possible now because this is a gigabit router. So the new version is a gigabit router with gigabit traffic. So it can take gigabit of data and pass it through the internet through the VPN. So that's why it's not something that could have easily been done before. So my new product has changed, and it's it's ten bucks more than before. The reason is not because the software got more expensive; it's because the uh, the tariffs. So a Raspberry Pi is more expensive now. Can I sell your product? Well, it's just software. You're in Sweden; you can sell the software. Yes. Okay, so he's in the village too. What does that mean? Just like MLK and the Malcolm X. So they will still need Epstein to get his money accounts info. He's still alive. Uh, whatever. I I will not get a gazillion views. I will get just my normal views. I, I don't think uh, I'm going to get extra views just uh, from having uh, John McAfee here. It, it will have to be me. I have to do the good job. It's not going to be from from John McAfee's name, okay? I have to do a good job. How is, are you still on the Arden uh, network? Uh, no, I kind of like, uh, I haven't done anything with the Arden project uh, because the signal is so bad that I'm just waiting for it to, you know, for somebody else to open up near me. So Rob's making cool gizmos all the time, but I need to make a living too, guys. So, you know, support the cause. I, if you want to, you know, do a little contribution that you think, uh, you know, because you believe in what I what I do, because I do this for you, uh, you can donate to Patreon. You can, you know, give five bucks a month, uh, 10 bucks a month on Patreon. And, uh, you know, that would be... A, you know, if, if many of you did that, then maybe I can uh, maybe I can eat. Uh, if you you know support me with buying my products and it benefits you directly, so uh, not a problem. Uh, your resonance. 
So you'll get extra viewers, may even make mainstream TV. No, Jay, it's, uh, he's doing interviews all left and right. You know, it's not nothing new. Uh, it's just the way that I think that I can focus on uh, which movie do you recommend? What movie are we talking about? I'm not recommending any movie. Uh, the Snowden movie, that's what you should watch. Uh, would have thought a talking orange would get views. I bet it would be most views you have ever gotten. Um, uh, not correct. Uh, yeah, I know you're here. I can see that. Are target people in the UK a real thing? Are targeted people in the UK? I don't know what that means. Uh, you'll get extra... What did I miss here? Go watch the BBC. It's called The Prisoner. <laughs> Who's the prisoner? Assange? Privacy focused people say similar things to what alternate fact people say. So I guess, uh, does that make us a conspiracy theorists? Because we know. So I don't talk about things that I don't know, but some, some things uh, uh, defy logic and you, you uh, have to deal with the mathematics of it. Uh, the Epstein case is an example of, I don't know, nobody knows. We, we're not, nobody's a witness to what happened in the Epstein case. But we do the math in our head and say, what is the probability of all these alignment of incredible uh, things that all happened to make sure that we don't have any video or guard or somebody was moved at the exact time and, and all of these that happened at the exact moment that just goes beyond the, the realm of probability. And the fact that they can hide it. That really, really bugs me. That really bugs me. Okay? Does that bug you? It doesn't bug you that, uh, you know, somebody can, can uh, uh, blatantly, you know, make someone disappear and get somebody suicided and we don't know who did it but somebody obviously had a lot to lose maybe it's not one maybe many and they need to shut somebody up and there you go that's what power is about so to remain in power you you uh, hide things okay uh uh, do you still have veggie photos? No, uh, everything is flawed. It's not. It's not. It's. Uh, I'll forget. Targeted people could probably be everywhere. The game is dirty from the top to bottom. Um, uh, imagine w what the mind of a wealth wealthy rapist was thinking that his run was over of course uh okay so <clears throat> so uh <clears throat> another kelp is here he uh he uh he thinks oh uh it's just by luck that there are some events that are so improbable but they all happen simultaneously in this one case and no one questioned it and the medical examiner said well Looks okay. Looks okay to me, and we don't have a picture of the body, too, you know, laying in its original state. We moved the body, and we don't have videos, and the, there's no guards, and there's no, and somebody, the cellmate got moved. I mean, one of those, okay, five, six of those happening at the same time, it's just so improbable that. You are a conspiracy theorist if you don't think that it is suspicious. It's actually the reverse. It defies common sense. Okay? It defies common sense. Now, somebody like uh, Kelp will say, well, you have no proof. <laughs> and there you go. Okay? Need I say more? It defies common sense, but you say, well, uh, no official person from the government said that it's, uh, you know, that it's not suicide. Therefore, it could not have been anything other than that. So there you go, sheep. 
Okay, so when when you know, just look at all the events that uh, led to led to uh, to this, and there you go. Uh, Botten was even saying that uh, he doesn't think it looks like suicide, but you know, take that away too if you want. Doesn't matter. The the point is that there's many many things in there that is just improbable to happen simultaneously. You know, it's just common sense, guys. You know, there's things that can happen, you know, from a probability point of view. But when, when the numbers of events are are against collecting the data, and then you start to say, uh, did you know that all the videos disappeared? And they're saying it was a computer error? <laughs> the com- all the videos disappeared, even in the past, all computer error. Wow. Wow. Okay, so there you go. So I'm not even gonna go where where Starlight's going because he's gonna, like I say, he's gonna, you know, <clears throat> get into the real conspiracies in here. Okay, but just just uh, you know, there's an official statement and there's uh, things that you ought to question as citizens, and most of you will not question. So what is he hiding? Why was it necessary to shut him up? What secrets are are hidden that we don't, they don't want us to know? What secrets does he have that he didn't want that no one somebody didn't want us to know? And why do you not care? So anyway, just uh, research it and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So uh and they put a murderer next to, in in his cell, and the uh, and they moved the supposed cellmate, the murderer, elsewhere, at least uh, during the time of his death. So you kind of wonder, uh, was he really moved? And just the sequence of events is just uh, is um, you know, for a common sense person, you should ask yourself the question. Common sense. Okay, so just think about it. Radioactivity at the scene and where the rubble was brought to. Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, okay, so anyway, uh, so there you go. There's a, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of things to think about. So uh, so anyway, uh, if you uh, don't like what I'm talking about, then hit the not like button and if you like what I'm talking about support the program and hit the like button so I see that uh, you know uh, certainly hundreds of you have shown up in here so far there's uh, 70 here in a moment and uh, please uh, support the program by hitting that like button if you like this channel and the content or this video uh, this live stream and so that the algorithm knows if you like us or not. So if you uh, say something. So <laughs> I don't really care if you like or dislike. I prefer that you like, but it's not, you know, it's, it's more that you get an opinion. So that's all. Uh, I don't, so, so Kelp believes in UFOs. But if somebody, uh, you know, certain things happen in front of them and, uh, no government official said said anything. Then he's gonna say, "Oh, didn't happen." Government said nothing happened, so nothing happened. Government never lies, according to Kelp. Government never lies. Uh, you you need to. Uh, I'm gonna give you a book to read, guys. I'm gonna give you a a book to read, and uh, you know. Um, why don't you read the books by Bamford, B-A-M-F-O-R-D. You can get his books on on Amazon Kindle store. And his latest one is called Puzzle, Puzzle, is it Puzzle, Puzzle something. Okay, uh, that's his latest book. And then the, he had, uh, the other book was uh, titled the, uh, uh, National Zucking Agency, etc., etc., etc. Read that too. So if you read that, 
you will see, and these are historical and based on actual interviews with real people, and then you can see if your government never lies. So these are real books and with real data interviews of real people, and then uh, you come and tell me that your government never lies. So if if that's what you uh, if that's what you think, uh, you know, uh, and after you read the book, and you still think that your government never lies, then I don't know what to tell you. Then live your dream world. I'm here to say uh, we need to protect ourselves. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, come on, kelp. It takes, uh, it also calcifies the, uh, uh, Bob, uh, okay. So, the name of the uh, author I'm talking about is Bamford. Uh, I can put the uh, link to the book after the broadcast so that you, you get to read it. I have not read his latest book. So I have to get that, and I'm sure it's about the National Zucking Agency. Okay, so uh, so read that, and you say, okay, so you, if your government is capable of lying, then you need to consider what you should do about that. Okay, so it's Bamford. So I will uh, I will put that on in a link after the video. Give me a give me a you know within the next hour. Uh, lived here for twenty five years and only passed three years. Suddenly I'm getting massive amounts of hard water. What the? Uh, okay. So anyway, uh, the the in summary and let, let me just say this in summary that we we live in a situation here where each of us uh, worries about different threats and. At the very least, we're concerned about being doxxed, uh, being shamed, being uh, blackmailed with information, losing job opportunities, uh, you know, uh, losing insurance, uh, losing health benefits, and so on because of something that occurred in social media because we do not protect ourselves by knowing the threats and keeping that data from going out there with our real name and so on because we don't have proper OPSEC. Uh, and then we go to the other extreme, which is, you know, the people uh, of the types like McAfee, Snowden, and Assange, who, uh, well, Assange is, is, is in jail, but uh, Snowden is, uh, is in Russia evading three-letter agencies. I'm, I'm sure they're trying to kill him too. And and then we got McAfee who has managed to evade them. And I will tell you this really, really interesting story just to show you the brilliance of McAfee. And that's just, if, if you see this, you if you not, have heard the story, if you haven't heard the story, then uh, uh, he revealed this on Twitter and it was like, it's worth a movie by itself. So, okay, let me just tell you the story before I, I this is going to be a, a good good end to this uh, broadcast. This is very interesting. So, McAfee was pushing crypto. <clears throat> As you know, McAfee pushes crypto. And uh, if McAfee pushes a cryptocurrency, then the price goes up and everyone, you know, is wants McAfee to speak out positively about any crypto because he, he can make him money. Okay, so McAfee went on the uh, on on Twitter and said, "Hey, I you know I I uh, I'm broke, I'm broke, so I need to uh, I need to uh, make a living. So you know, give me give me uh, give me jobs." So he was offered a job by a company called uh, the uh, uh, China Zombie. Research Center or something along those lines. China Zombie Research Center. And basically, the Chinese Zombie Research Center wants to make some zombie coins. Th this is a real story. Zombie coins. They want to make a cryptocurrency for zombies. Okay? And uh, I, I, the premise was that they believe in zombies, the China 
zombie research center and they research zombies and that in case zombies uh, attack us uh, that we're somehow they're going to use those crypto coins to pay the zombies i'm not sure what the intent was but something something weird like that and so they hired mcafee to write a white paper which is how you promote video uh to uh, promote the uh, the crypto called Ch china zombie research center or something like that so I, I thought maybe oh maybe it's a it's a marketing ploy they're going to change the name and what the real purpose of china zombie research center is i don't know so they were going to do something with it so anyway so so uh uh McAfee said he was paid a lot of money by the Zombie Research Center, something along the lines of $250,000 to write a white paper plus uh, uh, large chunks of, of crypto coins from the, uh, zombie, uh, from the China Zombie uh, crypto that will be made. He will get a large chunk of it when the crypto is created. And so, uh, so with the white paper plus the cash of $250,000. So he then wrote the uh, the white paper. I read the white paper, and then you know you know what he said to the white paper on the white paper said, "No one should zucking buy China zomb zombie research center crypto. This is a stupid thing, and who the zuck believes in zombies? And this is very very stupid. And yes, they paid me two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but you know, but uh, I will write some more. But this is the beginning of what I'm going to write about and. Uh, and so on. So I thought that it was like a, a marketing ploy. So then he, uh, then uh, the uh, the uh, Chinese zombie uh, research center went on Twitter and said, uh, "We will sue you, McAfee. You, uh, uh, we we hope we gave you money and you know in good faith, and you're supposed to promote the Chinese zombie, and you screwed us by talking negatively about uh, uh, China zombie, and we're gonna." Take you to court, and and then McAfee responded, uh, "Well, sue me. I mean, I've been sued two hundred and some times, so nothing new here. Go sue me. I don't care." And so, uh, but he, I'm keeping the money, something along those lines. Okay, then, not, okay, that's the end of the story. There, I'm going to tell you the twist. Okay, listen, Kelp, Kelp, listen well here. I'll tell you the twist. So apparently. When the zombie, when zombie uh, research center was dealing with McAfee, the three-letter agency, the Zucking IA, apparently contact contacted the zombie research center to say we will pay you two hundred fifty thousand dollars to tell us, or to find out where McAfee, arrange a meeting and tell us where McAfee is, and we're gonna give you the money. So the th three-letter agencies, South China Zombie Research Center. <laughs> there you go, Crime Star. So we're going to pay you $250,000. Uh, find, find McAfee. We want to know where he is. Okay? So the three-letter agencies want to find him. And they paid him money, paid China Zombie. And China Zombie, uh, you know, went on the Twitter and saying, we're going to sue you, China Zombie. And then McAfee just started to laugh. He started to laugh, guys. And why? Because South China Zombie Research Center is a McAfee company. South China Research Center, South, South China Zombie Research Center was created by McAfee to create this fake interaction and convince the CIA to give him $250,000. <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an incredible story. Incredible story. So it turns out, and now now you can see China Zombie Research Center talking on uh, Twitter on on McAfee's account because because China Zombie Research Center is McAfee. He created this ploy 
and no one knew about it and it's like uh okay so now if you think that the guy is an idiot he basically tricked a three-letter agency <laughs> no wonder they want to kill him <laughs> oh gosh <clears throat> so uh so there you go so now uh you know i don't know if you don't think that's brilliant i don't know what to say <laughs> so uh Okay, so uh, this is, uh, yeah, if you want to know, you know, you have to read him on uh, on his tweets. Uh, this happened, I think, in December. And it's uh, it started in Sept August, I believe, and then it ended in, uh, he only revealed the truth uh, just recently. No, Starlight. I already asked. He that's already been asked of him. He said, "Zach Gute, no, he's dead. He's been suicided." He even gave the exact time. He said he was killed around two thirty uh, a.m. by Taglioni. You don't have to ask him that. He stated it. It's on Twitter. People have said, "Oh, he's alive." Like I said, no. He said, "Zach Gute, no." <clears throat> okay so there you go so that's what we're dealing with is uh you know if, if you have that kind of skill to, I, goodness i don't know how to do that that's uh I, i'm not looking at him as a hero I, this is not nothing about that but it's just telling you that uh, this kind of things go on and I, i'm just watching this in the background and saying what the zuck what the zuck okay so anyway, yes. So he uh, he said no, he is not alive. <clears throat> that Taglioni uh, uh, suicided him at two thirty some a.m. Uh, uh, that night. <clears throat> and no, he's uh, he's he's not going to come back alive. Nobody wants him back. So that's that's uh, that's his that's his take. Okay, so. Anyway, uh, is uh, 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 the bin we gave for you? Uh, looking forward to okay. So that that'll again. That's not next week. It's, it, I'm gonna post it the following week, and hopefully I have good questions because uh, uh, I'm more interested in some of the cybersecurity kind of questions uh, about you know how how he deals that. Uh, who in Iran tricked billions? Tricked? Uh, I say ads. Uh, what? Should, sure fooled me. We, you would have been laughing about a huckster duping taxpayers with their money. Um, oh yeah. So so it, somebody's trying to kill you, and you. Uh, you know, a three-letter agency is trying to kill you for whatever reason that's, you know, sure not based on legality. You don't, why would that, so, so cal, this is, this is called for you. So you're being hunted down and with several attempted murders on a non-legal issue. So, you know, he has IRS problems and that uh, should bring him to court and, and then, you know, take him to jail for IRS problems. That is not something that, you know, has to do with being, having attempted murder. You can see why he wouldn't want to come back. He wouldn't want to go uh, to the government here because they're, obviously they're going to suicide him if he ever arrives in the U.S. So he says he will never come back to the U.S. again. So, uh, you know, so that's, that's the story. So, if you if you uh, if you look at that and you say, oh he he took taxpayer money as like, suck somebody's trying to murder you, from a three letter agency and uh, you know and uh, you know you're worried about that, <laughs> and like, well obviously if somebody's trying to kill you you have different priorities. So uh, because he's half the indigent populace they were pro by alien the, uh, okay kelp. Glad to have you here. <clears throat> Glad to have you here. 
That's what, Doug, that's what Kelp would say. That's what Kelp would say, even though uh, McAfee wasn't even in the country. So, oh, well, he was. <clears throat> uh, what do you know, Starlight? Do you know, do you know what happened there? They think they're making a movie out of it, so... So, uh, you, uh, is there a, uh, is there a, uh, a charge? Don't know anything, Starlight. At the moment, there is no charge. At the moment, he's wanted for questioning. They want to interview him, and no one's charged him, even from there. The McAfee zombie crypto story. I ain't drinking that Kool Aid. So you don't think that happened? Well, that uh, happened right on uh, Twitter. I've been following that for months, and when I when I learned the punchline, I was like, "What the zuck? That actually that actually happened. That happened on Twitter, you know, over the months, and that's why I I was I reacted to it with more shock because it happened, you know, in the normal course. And when he revealed the truth, I was like, what the fuck? That's pretty funny. Okay? So anyway, um, uh, so anyway, so for, for uh, uh, so if you, uh, if you, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, tell me that I shouldn't be interviewing uh, John, well, <clears throat> there's a lot I will learn here. So, uh he obviously has some uh, knowledge that I don't have, and I I want to get that knowledge, and uh, I don't need to uh, to delve into, his, you know, his interested in uh, drugs, alcohol, and women doesn't need to concern me because I'm just trying to get information that's useful for the rest of the world here. Okay, hello, Donnie Murdoch. Have you actually? Uh, did you guys uh, run my uh, my Python code on uh, my my Linux uh, program, Catch MITM, that I did, that is working. <clears throat> that is working. <laughs> Who cares, Kelp? Who cares? <clears throat> Who cares? That's, you know, um, <laughs> if, he, if he didn't actually get any money, it's still a pretty cool story. So, uh, you might get a large audience and stream failure. It's not. I'm not. It's not a stream. It's a. It'll be done. It will be recorded. So anyway, uh, so that was just a punchline. There is just interesting. So anyway, I'll I'll uh, see about uh, making more videos next week. And please watch the video that I the, the very important video, which was about. Uh, about uh, OPSEC and then the other video I did earlier in the week was how I integrated a Brax router wired into my network so my Wi-Fi is actually VPN so all of my Wi-Fi routers are now half of them are VPN half of them are not VPN and all controlled by just one device this so I don't have to buy like several of these just one then I already have existing routers uh, and just one device, I was able to turn my house into into a uh, VPN and non-VPN. And if you have another one of these, you can set one up also as Tor. So you can have VPN, Tor, and clear network in your house. And you don't have to program your de devices. Your devices just pick a network and you're on. And you say, oh, this is a VPN network. This is none. And you can skip all the tracking and Kalia and all that. Uh, just by having the VPN. So, okay, so there you go. Uh, ask him who really rules the world. Uh, he already answered that. The system, the three-letter agencies. He already answered that. So why don't you ask him yourself? You know, you can ask him on Twitter. He will answer you. <clears throat> Clearly, he, uh, he, uh, he thinks that... Uh, the deep state has uh, basically uh, taken control here. Uh, 
still doing next Friday's live. Yeah, we'll be here next Friday. Okay. Uh, I am not on the land, Mel Gibson. I am on Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi. Please hit like on the video on uh, on YouTube. Would appreciate it. Please hit like. Don't leave without hitting like or dislike, whatever you want, on the YouTube. Uh, if if you're uh, if you think I'm uh, if if you uh, think I'm a conspiracy theorist, then you should hit dislike. Uh, I am not a conspiracy theorist. I don't do. Uh, I don't do, uh, it's above the three-letter agencies. Uh, I know what you mean, Starlight. They're the operators. Uh, do they respond to someone other, other, other than that? I have no idea. No, I do not like Wisecam. If you want to get hacked, go use Wisecam. Or Ring. That's why I made my own security products. I sell my own cameras, alarm, and so on. And I do not use uh, any of those products because they are meant to hack you, especially Ring. Uh, network Connect. Yeah, if you do wired on this, it just stabilizes everything. And, and it just, it's amazing what you can do with this, you know, when you have a wired VPN network option. It's incredible. If you haven't thought about that before, think about it. Because all you do is just pass this to uh, your router and you put an adapter, Ethernet here, which you feed back into a switch. And then you expand your network uh, on the VPN side and, and uh, as many uh, Wi-Fi routers as you want. And one device and you cover your the entire house with VPN and non-VPN combination. You can hook up anything to uh, to that device because it's wired Wi-Fi. It's wired. All the best content is on Fridays because none of us have girlfriends. <laughs> you can always watch the replay. Okay, guys, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, watching again. Before you leave, hit like on the uh, YouTube video. And uh, again, support the channel if if you want to support on Patreon. You know you can contribute as little as five bucks a month, ten bucks a month, uh, or buy the products. <clears throat> and uh, and I will give you information that will help you. And I think uh, they're shipping my Pine Phone. It probably got shipped today. I would imagine. So likely uh, my Pine Phone has already been shipped and maybe in the next couple of weeks I should be able to make a video about the Pine Phone and see how that zucking thing works. So uh, maybe after the McAfee interview then maybe I'll have a Pine Phone to play with, okay? Who controls the past controls the future? Who controls the present controls the past? Yes, yeah, Starlight, that's above my pay grade. Above my pay grade. Uh, I I know that company, uh, 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 your residence. Don't use that. Okay. Yes, I know that company. They're the uh, uh, Kelp. I think gave me a link to that because he's like such a big promoter of that company. So why would you want to? You know, all these uh, expensive uh, camera systems, and th then they just get hacked. Okay. You know, they're all hackable. You want me to do a video to show you how to hack um, uh, Ring? I mean, I can do that very quickly. I don't have Ring. Send me a Ring, and I'll run my new app on on uh, Linux, and I will show you how I can shut down Ring. Easy. Okay, do you want me to do that? No, you did that. Was that you? That was not Kelp that did past access? Yeah, so yes, I can shut down Ring. So Ring is sharing your video and your pictures to uh, a centralized database that's on Amazon and they, it was meant to be shared to the police. So Ring is a surveillance system, guys. You are really dumb to install Ring. Do not install Ring, period. 
It's a surveillance device. Do not install Ring. That wasn't you, Kelp. I thought it was you, but if you're not you, then uh, uh, your residence here said it was him. Okay, so it's not you, Kelp. Nothing bad about it. It was just somebody uh, passing me a link to a... Uh, yeah, they are the marketing leaders in camera surveillance. You're right. That doesn't make them safe. Okay. Okay, so yeah, if you want to promote Ring, then I say Zach you. Don't promote Ring. Okay. Please explain why not. Why not Ring? You have Ring then. You probably also have Alexa Echo. Do I need to explain it? I don't need to explain it. You, you can watch in a different video. Okay, this is not a video for it. Okay, ring is evil, six, the mark of the devil. Okay, so if you think that uh, Alexa Echo is doing good things for you, then uh, good luck with that. Any tools to avoid ring surveillance? Yes, I, I uh, hopefully I'll make, I'm, I'm making an app, it runs on Linux, it will run on a Linux phone. Um, but maybe I can make a portable one that you can put in a Raspberry Pi and then you send a signal and kill Ring as you approach it. Okay? <laughs> Your nest. That's not any better. But Ring is really bad. Okay? Uh, nest. Nest is bad too because Google's taking your data. But Ring is incredibly bad. Incredible. I mean, they actually have contracts with the police agencies and collecting the data. The police are promoting rings that you all have rings that they can go spy on everyone in the, in the country. Okay? So the best way to stop ring is you can actually make a device to uh, disconnect the Wi-Fi. Very easy to do. But it may need, you know, some other portable device. So if you're jogging around, you can turn on this device and as you walk around, it can stop the networks from spying on you. Comcast. Uh, Comcast is not a uh, camera. No, 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 not the laser thing. That's a different attack. No, I'm not talking about that. There is a laser attack, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's uh, I'm talking about a remote attack. I can attack without even doing anything. I'll just walk by it. It'll attack it. Okay. I can attack it just by walking by it. So if I carry a device, let's say I built a Raspberry Pi with a device. But here's a trick, for example, I'm going to give you another one. And it's getting kind of getting late, so I don't want to extend you too, too far here. Very easy to build, okay? So I can build a device. This is there, You can find this on YouTube. Uh, that will uh, spoof GPS so that it, any time that my device is running, uh, I can send you to a, your GPS to a different location. So let's say I make my house a, uh, you know, disappear from GPS. Yes, I can make my house disappear from GPS. Okay, it's very easy to do and I have the equipment for it. I actually have the device for it. Okay, it's actually very easy to do. Probably take me a day. Okay, and then... Uh, uh, I can run it, every time I run it, then the GPS around the area would fail and would uh, think they're elsewhere. And basically, when they're here, they would disappear from the map. Okay? So that's something I could do. Okay? It's, it's not an actual jammer. It's actually a spoofer. It's a GPS spoofer. He said, in the stock market? I don't know. I don't think... Uh, Teal wanted to sell it. Okay? So this is not a jammer. Jammer is one other thing. But this one is a uh, spoofer, which is even easier. You spoof a... No, not a deauth attack. That's... Uh, that's uh, deauth is... Uh, you can use deauth against ring. But the uh, spoofing attack is an actual... You, you actually broadcast GPS with different coordinates. Uh, how did you learn to do all this? It's easy stuff, EM. I'm a programmer. Okay? 
I thought you said I was replaceable, Doug. So yes, it, it, in case you don't think I know how to do this, go look at my app on, on uh, GitHub, uh, what I do with the Catch MITM Linux app, which is a cybersecurity app. And you can say if, if I know what I'm talking about. Okay, go just go look at it. You may not understand what's going on, but you can see if I know what I'm talking about. So, so uh, uh, yeah, go check out and see uh, if I have that skill level. The problem is getting the compatible... Uh, Wi-Fi adapter because in order to do it you have to run you know the right uh, Wi-Fi adapter that's compatible and I for example I don't know if the one in the Pine phone is going to be compatible so I may have to make one using a Raspberry Pi and I can demonstrate that okay so just to say, you know, you, you guys think that the world is safe and nothing can screw with you and there's no such thing as hackers and all that. And, you know, I, I can prove to you that uh, you are very vulnerable. If I can turn off your ring, uh, as fake name is said, yeah, fake name, make one. Just do a deauth. Yes, that's one of the ways. Deauth, the other one is uh, send a deauth attack. The other one is a um, uh, ARP, ARP attack. You can use two attacks. D auth, you can use both. D auth and, and ARP attack. Uh, D auth is uh, layer two and uh, ARP is, well, ARP is layer two as well. Let's see. Yeah, ARP is broadcast layer two, yeah. Okay, but uh, one is a, is a uh, uh, 802.11 protocol and you do a deauth. So fake name, yes. You uh, you uh, uh, more than one vector at a time be cool. Okay, so yeah, so you know, if you're a hacker, you know all this, so this is not 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 a secret. These are all doable. You know, hackers know how to do this. I was just trying to make it convenient. Can I make it like uh, available to the common man to use? You can learn about this. And do it, Starlight. Don't talk about it. Just do it. I want to learn how you do these things. Well, you know, the, the problem with EM is it, it comes from so much knowledge. When I look at it, you know, when somebody asks you, when somebody asks you EM, do you even know what, you know, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four is? If you don't even know the answer to that, then, then, uh, then, uh, you know, it's hard to get into all the detail. You know, you know all the protocols. Do you know what ARP is? Do you know what, uh, you know, your, your programming aside, your knowledge of networking has to be like superior. Then you got to like know everything about the programming languages and so on. It's, 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 it's a lot of knowledge. Okay. It's a, uh, it's a lot of knowledge. So, uh, so it's, it's not easy to acquire. I mean, you have to, to do, to have done it it's just uh you know uh many many uh youtubers are collaborating with me starlight i don't know what you're talking about <clears throat> did you not know that all the you the linux uh that many of the linux uh uh broadcasters have are are uh you know are friends with me and doing things with me what is the ring you're talking about Amazon Ring. John Bradley, it's... Okay, so... Uh, uh, know what you know and it's cool. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so anyway... Um, wow, we uh, this is kind of a long, long session here. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Please uh, hit like on the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, where would you start? Uh, get how about getting some uh, network uh, certification? Or ignore me. Every time I try to talk to you, you get mad at me and yell. Uh, remember, I was the one who pushed you here in the first place. Okay, guys. So. Uh, Thank you for uh, thank you for coming and uh, again watch out for that. Uh, you'll see me next week before the before the video uh, with with McAfee. So you'll see me here next week and we'll have a couple of videos. 
and I, I want to also uh, do a demo of the uh, the app I did the cybersecurity app I did for for Linux okay so anyway thank you for watching guys and I uh, appreciate it thank you so much and I'll see you in a video shortly I won't be doing I'm only doing one live stream a week right now because I don't have time okay thank you